You can't do that. No. Oh, 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 the... we're like. What? Two. Boing. Three. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Magadan Po, Magadan Po. Guys, good morning. G and H here. Gilda, Gilda and Heidi here. <laughs> <laughs> Today, guys, we are going to be getting into the financial sector of the Philippines. We'll be breaking down exactly what's going on in the stock market. And we'll be discussing bonds and technology bonds and Paro bonds and Philippine bonds and SNM. No. Oh man. And <laughs> just kidding, guys. We'll we'll be getting into pitfalls of money and um oh my god. I don't even want to what was that? No, I was gonna start talking about your NFTs and your um, NFTs. And I need to play more to, to, to increase their value. Right. So, guys, we'll be getting into that, and that's what's going on. So get your questions and your responses, and let's talk, guys. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. talk. Get ready. Get talk. Really super cute, super cute. We were looking at a shout out to um, Henry Font. Font not, I don't know. It's like leaning towards me. I don't know what's doing. It's that. because it's the. What'd you do? Break it? Huh? George broke his stick again. But uh, you're, oh, geez, stop moving around. Henry Fontenot, um, a friend of ours um, that we communicate through Facebook. We're just looking at his little boy. Um, he's super adorable. Him and those eyelashes. And like you said, he should sell those. Button, yeah. He should sell those eyelashes. He should make like a line of eyelash extensions and stuff based Holy on. Holy crap, you're not kidding. No, he's got super long, and that's not even one second. He's got super thick eyelashes. He was showing them the other day. Wow, those are beautiful eyelashes. No, seriously. This hey, kid, babe, check it out. He has a straight layer of thick eyelashes. Check it out, the lotionettes. It puts the lotion in the basket. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so anyways, I got to find the one that he had. There you go. Yeah, no, he has a nice thick layer of eyelashes. Super adorable. So it's we've been going cute. through responding to some people on Facebook and going through the news and our emails this morning and talking and George sleeping into the last 20 minutes. So you should start getting up sooner than 20 minutes before. Yes. Yeah. 18. Oh, uh, wait. So anyways, guys, what is new? Oh, my God. What's, what? Makeup, please. You don't need makeup. Yeah. Cindy G are always an early riser. Cindy G, two hours to wait. Sarah Tyson, hello, Heidi and George. Good morning. Hello, Cindy. Cindy G says, 60 minutes, Ken. Cindy G says, hello, Sarah. So, so excited to start my day with George and Heidi from Dumaguete, Philippines. Oh, that's so Sunday, sweet. Cindy G. Yeah, I like that song, that sunny day song. It's it's like a a, a, a very happy, happy song. It is. And the uh, the end song, the end credit song, um, Pina Colada. It reminds me of um, Deanna Carter, Strawberry Wine singer. The the Pina Colada. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Pina Colada yeah, song. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. 
Hey, Ted, Ted in the house. Good morning. And good morning to all of our members that are actually in the house. Big shout out yes. to you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of members, um, <laughs> hi, Beverly. She's actually out somewhere having fun right now. I believe she said she's on a cruise, so I'd like to get some of those. I know, right? Hmm. Anyways. Yeah. She, has, she won't be, be with us for a while. She'll, she'll only want to be on ship internet, which is, how does ship internet work again? Not very well, that's for <laughs> sure. Okay. Huh? My my frog, my frog. You bring up Freddy the Frog. Yes, Freddy the Frog, my frog purse that I got from the Philippines for all you that aren't interested. But me and Freddy want to know. You spoke of members, right? Yeah. Are you the last member? Your member's jacket. Do you still have it upstairs? Member jacket? Is that over your head? Anybody out there remember the member jackets in the 80s? The ones that were the, they almost look like a, I said members only or members jacket. Yeah. Um, no, I'm trying to remember that we watched a movie that actually says that. Yeah. It's a real jacket. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to remember which movie it is. It was it's a re recent movie. Yeah, probably but... your, um, we can't say it, your C-O-K-I-A-N bear. Oh, is that what that is? I think it was in there. So. Yeah, still best one of the best, best movies ever. Yeah, what was that movie that we watched last night that I told you? House in the Bayou. Good movie, guys. Check it out. I no, no, no. It check it out. 20, House in the Bayou. Great the movie Arena. if you're into horror. We're, we're into horror. Well, it's not really, to me, it's more of a drama. It's not like one of those summer camp movies or... It was, it was actually interesting. It wasn't predictable. I don't think so. I don't think you've seen those turns coming. Well, I mean. Did you predict it from the beginning like we usually do? Not really. Well, it would have Did helped you? if you hadn't said nothing. <laughs> Heidi, whenever you watch a movie with Heidi, never, never watch a movie with Heidi. Because I'll either stir you the wrong way, midway, or. Well, bottom line, she's. Babe, you have a tendency of ruining movies. You didn't say nothing when I when I was laying in your lap. When I used to visit Heidi, when I get off work, it doesn't matter. You, I would sit on the couch. And she's like, "Here's the movie," and then while I'm sitting there eating my whatever, she fixes me. She's like, "So this is what happens. This is what happens as I'm watching the movie." I'm like, "Oh my god, please don't tell me what happened then." And she does. See, I see it a different way. When we used to do that, George used to fall asleep almost right away. So I was watching it by myself anyways. Yes or no? Did you fall asleep most of the time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because you were working a lot. Also, yes or no, was it me laying in your lap and you didn't have nothing to say? Was I in your lap, all up in your junk or what? You're always up, on, up in my business. Oh my god. Oh check it out, guys. What is it? Um, well, it almost turned out to be a panini, but um last um I was cooking and this is a oat based um I haven't really put a name to it. Basically it's nan bread with um it's like pan bread. That actually is made with uh, cheddar, um, real blueberries, and it's just oat flour, yeast, and it's actually cooked in a pan with just a little bit of oil. So basically, it's pretty healthy, no chemicals. But guys, I wish you guys had like yeah, it's really good. Smell of vision. The best way to describe it, if you go to Auntie Ann's, um Auntie Ann's pretzels, you buy a cheese pretzel and then drizzle blueberry on top. That's exactly what that tastes if like. We would have had an oven to bake it. That's pretty much what it is. Well, it's it, pretty it, much pretzel material, but off I the use pan, it tastes that's what it tastes like. It is really good. It no, is it's really good. good. I already yeah. ate a piece of it this morning and it's really, really good. It's almost like a panini press, but it's just basically a pretzel mix. But I used a little bit of Moscavo sugar inside there that's got like magnesium it's, it's really calcium. sweet it's, it's the blueberry that makes it sweet it's somewhat healthy based it's not you know we could probably eat the whole plate and if you went and got a donut up the streets oh speaking of donuts you still got that but you didn't show it the last time actually you should have gave that to willy bugs because yesterday was his birthday that a, is the a giant cinnamon roll that he got the other day when we were out during that live live guys and it was yeah so 
Yeah, so it was Willie's birthday yesterday, so we he got yeah, two years old. Yeah. Yeah. So he got extra, extra food and extra love. He was in here most of the time. Yeah, we ended yeah. up getting um a sweet roasted chicken from Chooks to go. Yeah. It was pretty yummy, guys. So the Ted Dinkins, hello, Cindy G and Sarah Tyson. Hi, Scott. Hello, beautiful people. Good morning. Scott in the world as I see it. Hello, Ted, Cindy, and Sarah. Hello, Heidi and George. Good morning. Oh. Yes, yeah, Scott is on Solomon Island. Um, hopefully he's okay. There's a storm headed his way. Uh, Scott. Hey, just a bill. It always reminds me of that song. Yeah, I'm just a bill. Yeah, I, I, I Hill. Yeah. Old eighties. Um, they used to play those informational goodies during Saturday morning cartoons and sometimes mid-afternoon. Dollars back up versus peso fit six now down a bit. Now the reason for the fluctuation actually is somewhat good and bad news for Philippine expats. And I say somewhat good and bad. It's good because it's still up there. It's bad because it's it's fluctuating. The reason for the fluctuation fluctuating is because the Philippine economy is actually getting better. And gas prices are going to go down a dollar eighty. They said next week. Peso. Pesos. Yeah. Sorry. I sorry. think they kept it up like most holidays. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Peso. Yeah. So no. Which is good for the Filipinos, which is the most important, and we'll get further into it a little bit, talking about um, the matter of some random kids making random noises yeah, yeah. it's not more like a meow so like yeah it sounded her. like a cat she's in her ball pit that's basically a ball pit you know like after the oh yeah yeah yeah. it's missing balls you know what you know what we can do to that baby I can put some crate? balls in there we need a lot to fill it up oh and that's not you so save your balls and keep them in your pants and we'll hey you know what we can do i got a better idea after she has those kittens I'm predicting three at least when she has those kittens and we just remove the cat box out of there and everything. We just fill it, fill it up with uh, balls like a ball pit and let the kittens jump around. Now, anyway, I was kind of asleep, right? And here's the thing that uh -huh. you guys, may, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before. What? Yes. That I'm like a three year old and that I am, um, Crazy zeal. Well, that. But Heidi usually has conversations with me while I'm unconscious on a regular basis. Are you kidding me? You do. What you do on your own time is on your own but, time. Oh, yeah, on my own time while I'm asleep. After while, 5 while I'm conscious. No, what I'm saying is you converse with me while I'm asleep. I know I know you do. Oh, so that's how come you're like like this, like shrugging your shoulders but here's the thing. and looking at your phone. She, this morning she said, the cat has the kittens, the cat has the kittens. You know how I know that it's not true? Because you didn't hear the little meow. No, you'd have been jumping on me. Like, oh, why she was having like, the kittens? Yeah, if she was, I'd have woke. Dude, you're fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, I would have, but he knows. But sometimes I do fool you on some stuff, so that's for sure. Sarah Tyson, hello, room and Ted. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi, Harry. Hello, George and Heidi, and all from Deer Park, New York. Good morning, Harry Walsh. Rob Swift. Hey, good morning. Oh, that's what I was starting to say real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I was starting to say that it's good for the Philippines. The economy is improving. You said there was something going on with the inflation. Was everything? Inflation is going to go down by 4% next month, but I in wanna... theory. What I want to let people know, and this will come into our actual conversations, is that the it's that scrapper dude who has a loud speaker yeah, on his yeah, but he's going, bicycle. Yeah, but that is uh, oh my god, that's um, you're talking the song. Yes, that is uh, not Eddie Van Halen. It's the other guy. It's Van Halen. It's yeah. one of their songs. So he's going by at okay. It's a it's a forty five. So yeah, most of the music you'll hear is from the eighties. Fair game. Just so you guys know, which is cool. I told you guys it was like the eighties, but 
anyways, if you all keep living your Western style life, or you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, which will be part of our conversations later and all that. And it's, God, can I say monkey see, monkey do? Don't be offended, guys. It's not intended for you. What I'm saying is that's the best theory in my head that I can say is if you guys keep seeing and doing, you go broke really quick and things can go south really quick in the Philippines. You could come here. There's a lot of ballers here. There's a lot of people going through hundreds of dollars a day in this area, Angel City, other areas, other parts of the Philippines. So you can live as lavishly as you like, and you can live on a budget and still, you know, be way better than you are in the United States. But just understand that some people come here and they're expecting dirt, dirt cheap, like really dirt cheap, but in their mind, they still got that Western mindset and it keeps the money, like your bank account is just emptying out by the moment. There's no doubt in my mind um, that, yeah. Well, like, that it can go what, south. what did I say that was worth a quarter yesterday? Uh, no, no. Uh, the, deli cents. the delivery of your chooks. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was literally 18 pesos or something. Yeah, to have the chicken delivered, 50 cents. 20, yeah, it was like 50 cents for a food delivery. But sometimes with us being busy, it's not because we're just trying to 100% stay in the house. You know, running this channel takes actually time. Uh, the heat of the day and doing the lives, all that changes how much we actually go out and everything. And with the delivery of items that we actually need, or we actually go out to store or the markets or whatever, it was 50 pesos for a delivery. I mean, what does it cost you guys to have a delivery? But there are a lot of people that do go into these uh, Western style restaurants here in Angel City and um, the other areas, Mavacloud City, San Fernando, you could be out 50, 60 bucks pretty quick in some of these restaurants. So right, right. it's, or more. I mean, yeah. And again, to clarify on the delivery, um, we're not complaining about delivery charge, but here's the thing. And I always tell Heidi this, you're not paying the delivery driver to deliver your food. Honestly, mm -mm. you're paying him to stand there and wait for probably 15 to 30 minutes for your food. Mm -hmm. Um, so Whenever you see me go to Chicken Star on my old, older videos, I'm actually standing there usually for 30 minutes. That's why in one 30 of the, or 40 minutes. Yeah, that's why one one time I'm just sitting there and just flew my drone because I'm like, well. Yeah, and, so that. And remember, you're out in the heat. And I mean, I mean, I'm used to it. But what I'm saying is speaking, you'll be waiting out there. If, speaking of which, you said the heat. Um, that's oh, part of our conversation yeah, again, this morning. No, hmm. I'm, we're not trying to scare you guys. But. It does get hot in certain areas, hotter than most. Mm -hmm. 118 in Butuan. 118 degrees in Butuan City. Mm -mm. Two days in a row, people. Um, some people can adjust, but even people There's your friend. that have been here for a while, it's just getting hotter and hotter. And not to scare you, that's what air conditioning is actually for. And... Setting the unit up is about five or six hundred. Um, some of the rentals Airbnb already have them. What was the last electric bill? Oh, you mean the ours right now? Yeah. 75. Okay, so give or take about 140 US dollars. That's pretty good considering probably 50, over, I don't know, 20 days. We had it on 24 hours. So we figure yeah, it's about, about 20 200 days. a month. If we were in the US running AC in the heat of the day, and everything that we do, we have you know the lives. We use lights and all the stuff we got going on around us right now. Uh, would be how much do you think in the U.S. right now? Four, five, six hundred. Um, some of those electric bills in some of the areas is is really high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, usually three hundred is the average I usually see mm -hmm. among most of my friends. They they run about two hundred, three hundred during the summertime. Yeah. Remy Smith, hello, Heidi and George and everyone. Hi, Good Remy. Morning. Racer X in Barakai. Morning, Heidi and George. Cebu City in the house. Back from Bar Barakai. Hello to Roberta and our people on Facebook. Good morning. Oh, just the bill says escape is a song saying. Wow, good ear. Mm -hmm. Good ear. Good song. It, it might say it in the description too. California Oscar. Hey, George and Heidi. How's it going over there? Hot and sticky. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hungarian Pearl. Yeah, I'm going to show something to George real quick. See, can you see those? Yeah. 
that's on Facebook. Right. So it gives the option right away in the live. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Hungarian Forever says, good morning, you guys from Sydney, Nebraska. Oh, he's in Sydney today. Yeah, we were talking to him this morning. Nebraska, and sorry. And he was like, what you doing up that early? First off, we're usually up that early. George will sleep the last 20 minutes before the live and see him all perky because he's drank 12 cups of coffee. But, um, yeah, we're on... Um, cat alert right now or kitten alert or yeah. what George would call Chopal Express. Yep. <laughs> one to keep, three to eat. Um, so it's a cold day here. What? Three to eat? Yeah, one to keep, three to eat. How many you think they'll have? Four. I think she'll have three. Yeah. She's getting like every day. She's at like day 65 easy because we tried to calculate when in our heads when she might have gotten pregnant because she's just been getting fatter and the vet that was supposed to come here reiterated that she's definitely pregnant and yeah. i'm like crap we I kind of figured that from the beginning but i was like okay one of them said that she wasn't that she is I was like Listen, somebody get a pee stick and have her pee on or something but the last week she's just been getting bigger and bigger and the last two days she's getting bigger and bigger yeah but yeah we're on kitten alert i'm taking my 34 hour truck bait. That's good. That's good. You need to take your breaks. Um, for those who are not familiar, Mike Hungarian Polar Bear is a trucker. So you can see him different places each time we go live. Um, speaking of different places, um, him traveling actually kind of reminded me. Now, to those of you who are like um, Twister fans, remember Twister? A Supercell, the new movie. Okay. Um, oh. Baldwin is in it. Mm -hmm. Um, this is your monetization oh, for cool. that. So if you're a big fan of Twister, I call Supercell the new generation Twister. I call it Gen Z Twister. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good. Um, I actually was very skeptical about it, but no, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a great a movie. movie. We did that last so, yeah, so check that out if you're a big Twister fan. And hi to Alan Butner. Also. Alan Butner. There's a saying I seen you in Facebook because I'm going back and forth. Good morning from Tabuk Kalinga. Interesting topic today. I hope to learn something. Um, Rob Swift said, um, "There's a Y in front of front of the word Ram. Ram, huh? E. Card, Nosmo, and three others are watching with you. So I'm assuming they've got people with them. Rob Swift. I think he's on another account." So I guess there are a couple of people with him. No, I think that's um, all the Facebook watchers. Well, I think. this is Facebook watchers here. They're not. It shows us who's in the room. Oh, that, I don't know. <laughs> We're that's learning, weird. guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Prill. Oh, my gosh. That is cold. Um, Mike Prill. It got to 22 degrees last night and windy. Sarah Tyson. Members only. Ted Dinkins. Members only. <laughs> members only there it is i had one when i was in high school and it was really more of a boy's jacket but in high school living up north in the united states when the weather was between you know 40 and 50 you didn't want one of those big like bomber thick jackets like you were climbing mount everest or something in the snow but the members only jackets were kind of super thin and they're the ones that had that clip that went across your neck and everything. It's, uh, it, I, don't, I don't know what happened to the company. It probably still exists. Probably does. I mean like uh, what's that? Whammo? Whammo still exists. Yeah. Yeah. Whammo, <laughs> number Whammo toy company, Frisbee, um, slip and slide. They're still alive, alive and well today. California Oscar. My biggest cost in the Philippines is, was my girlfriend and her family that'll be coming up in our conversation guys so yeah but... yeah that's probably yeah again that's usually how it works oh and real quick um when we were talking about like costs real quick and i know it'll pertain later but while we're talking about it um somebody was asking about the vegetables are definitely on the rise the prices of food again if it's western food it's two to three times more than what you pay for it in the united states so if you go to get certain american products velveeta cheese some of these others they can actually be import up there. Cost. import costs will cost you two to three times more um that's why some guys go in and buy the bulk items but 
sometimes, like I heard somebody say, when you buy bulk, you tend to eat a lot more and you're buying a larger amount of food. Next thing you know, speaking of whammo, you're up to 300 US dollars worth of stuff for like 12 items on your belt. And it could happen. How many times did we go to um, Sam's Club? I don't think we could get out of the same club less than a few hundred US dollars every time we went. Well, did we ever see a bill under two or 300 when we entered the stores? Mm -hmm. No, that's what I'm trying to remember. I don't remember. We ship I don't remember Bion anything below 300. No, no, we were buying items to ship in Billy buying boxes when we were in the US. So a very small head of cabbage is a dollar. Three small potatoes cost a dollar and they were small. And then, you know, a bunch, like what we say, a bunch of bananas. I don't know. Uh, I know you're looking. Well, well, the bananas right there. That's what I was looking at. Right. Over there. So I think it's two pounds worth. It's four or five dollars. It was closer to five dollars. So I just don't want to say it was four. So um, I get in some areas in the U.S. It's actually really up there in cost. But um, no, somebody had asked about what it cost. Um, same here. We spend a few hundred pesos every time we step outside the door as far as grabbing street foods and vegetables and taking runs out and about. So some things are really inexpensive and then some things are just starting to grow. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. Mike Prill. I don't care for horror movies. I live the real horror in Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, speaking of Iraq, we actually have a lot of um, Iraq vets in the room. And also we have a, and our next interview is also an Iraq vet, vet too, as well. This was, this was the person this morning and he's officially a follower now. So. Oh, speaking of Iraq, Papa in the Philippines in the Good house. Morning. Good morning. Hi, in George. Hey, Bill, how are you doing? Hey, hey. Um, we just put in the in the community section that we just did an interview with Papa um, in the Philippines, and we should be releasing that on Tuesday. It's Filipino time. It'll be Monday for those that are in the U.S. and in the morning should be or evening. I forgot what it should be the opposite, but it's coming up in a few days. So we're working on editing that. And so, yep. Yeah, I'm just yeah check out Bill. Camera. He has his own channel. Papa in the Philippines. Yes. And there's Scott. Check out Scott's channel. Scott, Scott, Scott's the, channel too. Yeah. It's quite common um, when people are coming here that they actually start a channel. Most of the people, uh, which was mainly our intention in the beginning, was just to document what we were doing. And it gets to be a normal thing. You'll see when you go on vacation and places here in the Philippines, Filipinos, expats, everybody's just recording things. Well, a lot of them are just wanting their family to see what's going on. So it's more for prosperity. We, uh, I have children. We have children. George has a dozen million trillion kids. Thanks to you, they had to open up a new city in Florida. What you talking about? The tip of Tampa is yours. <laughs> oh, never, never that, mind. That, I opened myself up that on that one. That redefines the name Georgetown, huh? <laughs> Ladies do not drink the Kool-Aid if he says so. We like all gin and juice and Kool-Aid. Right. And they'll have a movie like The Father. Remember that one? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> now you made me forget what I was talking about. But just vlogging. Um, there's not problems. It's great. Uh, just don't let it consume your time. Um, also, um, it can bring in um, residual incomes if you keep at it. Better advice to people that are that want to do it. And like you said, a lot of people just want their families to see it or they do it for a little bit of income is to keep vlogging and just keep moving forward days. It can be, you know, yeah, hard to come up with topics or you're covering something, um, you know, to show people and, you know, just keep vlogging. That's my advice to our new friend, Scott, I just started a channel pop in the Philippines. So yeah, guys support, support, Support the locals, support your friends, and support George's bail fund. What? And what is it that we used to say? Oh, your funeral fund. Don't worry, it won't take much of a coffin. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna get you a nice little bamboo coffin. Right. And make it out of coconut husk. You only need about three coconuts, right? <laughs> Yay. 
a coconut. You want a coconut coffin? Right. There you oh go. Oh my God. Next live. No, we have to. Well, the next live will, will probably be based on social security and incomes and stuff after uh, the re release of the interview, but then we'll do coconut coffins in the Philippines. If you like pina colada. It's actually not far from the truth because uh, one of the... Actually, yeah, there's, the, that's kind of... The cheaper um, wood here is coconut lumber. We did a thing on like funerals and all that. It uh, It's not a popular topic because people don't want to be confronted about their you know mortality yes and so but we still probably do another one we have it in the expat help situation so yeah so check out scott and the world as i see it and and his channel actually involves again um he viewer into ships new ships old ships being rebuilt ships yeah where was that where's what name out um, oh wait wait there yes okay that's what i wanted to say all right so check him out. He says he's watching the most dangerous game on Amazon Prime. And so he is. Um, good movie. That's um, <clears throat> it's something Scott would watch. It's, um, I believe this is the, the shipwreck on the island movie. I believe most dangerous game. And speaking of that one, there's a newer movie called True Spirit. It's about an Australian 16-year-old girl that ships, sails across the world by yourself um check that out too scott great movie yeah remy smith we're hooked on hope yeah and anything ubi oh man well that's one of my favorite this that's kind of maybe what that reminds you of if that could be baked at this point it probably would turn into that dough almost like hopia well if that was ubi then yeah definitely that would change everything well or the mascavo sugar that's what they put yeah. in there oh wait a minute hopi is the more of the well Actually, now that Remy mentioned it, um, hand me the plate, babe. Oh. Actually, it's, like I said, it's more of a actually, that's probably now, why we said that because this actually looks like Hopia kind of looks like this, right? Versus, but what's the other stuff that I like? That I it's not Hopia, what's the other one that I like a lot that has the Moscavo, or you said you like the Ube? It's not Hopia, oh, Pia. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, but yeah. this I made with oat flour and the yeast and the scavo. Yeah, but hopia looks like this, except um, the breading on the hopia is uh, more flaky. Yeah. This one's more solid. <laughs> Just a bill. Schoolhouse oh, rocks. Schoolhouse rock. I, guys, mm -hmm. I'll be like, ugh, I'll be like, hey, hey, y'all. Uh, that thing and that thing. And about a dozen times a day, I'm like, Hey, George, what's that thing that goes there and what is it from and where is it? Have you seen that? And I did you see what direction that's in? That's like most of my day. And, and the lupus and my other issues do not help my yeah. memory. It's like a major brain And then fog. she says, oh, by the way, your boy, this, this, this. And I'm like, who? Your boy. I'm like. It does go that way, guys. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Grumpy dude, Brian. Good morning, Heidi and George. Oh, George and Heidi. Good morning. Mark Alaskan says, good, good morning, morning, Heidi and George. And the price of pork in Pagadian City oh, and Robinson's gosh. yesterday was so much more pricey than Cebu. Most cuts just under 400 pesos per kilo. Yeah, I mean, the, the food cost is on its way up. And what Filipinos actually do is they, like, do group meals. You know, all the families are living together or they have group meals. Um we tend to make like um like a stew of some sort or what is my lugao, lugao. Mm -hmm. so we take a little bit like that's probably what i'll do with part of this chicken is make lugao um we got burned out on it what like two weeks ago week ago week two weeks yeah. remember when i made two in a week or something and we were eating a lot of it but now that you know we have the leftover chicken. That's probably what I'll do with it, unless you want it in an egg omelet or something. Yeah. But, um, no, we hear you, but the price is up on meat. They did say um, on the pork, they stopped imports and chicken imports from some of the other countries, Chile and some other places. There's there's so much going on. But what was it that we seen? 
um, in the about, news. You're talking about the stems? They're talking about the chicken stems? Yeah. Cloning the chicken fat? Correct. Protein? They're making lab-grown meat. A couple companies in the U.S. have been approved. And we're not talking about like the soy meat that they already use and everything else. Uh, the same as AI. They're priming you guys for this meat that's up and coming. And they're going to do away with actual animal meat. They're going to start growing it. They're growing thousands of cells and the meat itself. They're cloning the meat. Yes. And basically it won't even require, um, in my mind, you picture a bunch of chickens in a tube being grown, you know, but basically they're growing the actual piece of meat. Yeah. Well, what it is, it's actually the old technology. Um, actually, the technology came from burn victims. Um, they used to replicate skin cells. Right. So they put a skin cell and have it replicate in this right. I nutrient see the source. graphs and they would right. graph them and then it the... would it would grow. Now uh -huh. same same principle, except in, except for skin, they actually use the meat right. and the meat replicates. So they've been having people test it, and like that woman said yesterday, she's like, "I really there's I I very no, you won't know. be able to tell. It's just." So you know. it's coming. I told George probably in about 10 years. I think we'll be seeing that along with a major AI jump. So yeah. probably. Yes. But here comes a question. How yeah. much are they going to sell? Now, it? that's a real question. But here's the thing again, as with anything. Is it going to be $10 a pound for that meat? Well, at, at the start, probably, cheer? yes. But then eventually it'll go a down. Bunch of other companies but you have to realize, it. too, which is more healthier, a vat grown meat or a grass fed meat or a regular grown meat. According it's, to them, they're saying this is going to that's, be healthier because that's it won't what I'm be saying, all the yes. extra hormones. It'll be natural. Like here, me and George, you know, been making healthier decisions. I've been losing weight. George has been losing weight. And I discussed, I was like, well, they said grass fed, you know, cow and this, this and that. And I was like, oh, never mind. Most of them around here are. Okay? Yeah, they are. They're most pretty of them, much. Most of them, yeah. <laughs> so we were already in that realm. That's probably why Carbo milk is so rich. That stuff is good. They that, sell, they sell it that at is the mall. so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Carbo, Carbo milk, guys, again, once you get a chance, drink it. Oh my gosh. I like to get a couple gallons of that and make our own cheese. All right. Tito Cha, say it. Uh, Mejo Akaba. No. Magadong. Magadong, Magadon. It's, it's three. Magadampo, Magadampo, Magadan. No, you should say Magadang, Magadang, Magadan. Yeah, I said it. Magadang, Magadan, yeah, Magadan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good morning, Tito. Grumpy Dude Bryant. The seasons in the Philippines have been out of whack since 2020 during COVID, but it's yeah. happened before. Yes, it does. El Nino, yes. Thanks, El Nino and La Nina. Oh, very good. Thank you for mentioning La Nina. In the Pacific Ocean, these changes will continue to fluctuate. Correct. Um, Yeah, El Nino, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been warm. Yeah, speaking of El Nino, happy Earth Day. Today or was it yesterday? Well, yesterday, but they're still, we're in the future. Yeah. <laughs> it's still Earth Day for mm. for the um, our Western counterparts. Tito Cha, magandang umaga. Heidi and George, good morning. Good morning. Heidi, keep the headscarves. You look marvelous. Aww. Ah, thank you. George chose this one to go with my other situation here. Civil liberties in the house. I'm to put one on you. What's popping, guys? Good morning. What's popping? What's new? Alan Butner, I have 5K US dollars in pocket waiting for exchange rate to get higher. But get nervous when it goes down. Risk of situation. I, I don't know if it's going to. It got pretty close to 60 in the last few months, but who knows that I could not even begin to say, but it's a good ideal. But at 55, I don't know, I would probably consider it because when he goes to exchange, if he does it right, probably get 53 out of the Yeah, you never get the exact exchange. Remember that. So mm -hmm. if it's 55, you'll get 53. You know. That's why you'll see a different conversion. Like if something's at 55, I usually take it to 52 or 53 when we convert it for you. So it's always around about like, you know, the new electric bill is 135. But no, I would. I I mean, probably, probably as soon as I say go ahead and do it, it'll go up in a few days or something. So um, isn't there theories on when to exchange versus probably not the weekend, of course. Um, I wish I had one. No. 
I don't have one. Personally. Like a day, I probably wouldn't do it on yeah. the weekend. I don't. I don't watch. I didn't. I don't watch the exchange enough to give a prediction. Sorry. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. we started watching a financial show yesterday that's on netflix and a lot of what they were saying makes sense we've only gotten into the first episode and there were some people in the show like they took these five or six couples and they're going through their finances and the one guy literally had a bank account for his dog a savings account for if something happened to him then the dog had his own savings account for crying out loud but he had no plans for his own future and retirement and the guy you know he made think the guy just yeah man that was a little rough that you even said that to me but it was the truth he told the guy that he needed to take you know into consideration his own financial future and then we kind of choked because there was this family that was picking twenty four thousand a month and they were overdrawn in their bank account so it's kind of like both me and George have been there. The more you make, the more you spend. And that was our theories in the United States. And then, oh my God, I hate allergy pill. Um, and that is like that for a lot of people and they don't plan financially. And when we have people like Alan Butner that planned, um, we have, uh, we've been dealing with Bill. I'm so proud of Bill. He's done everything possible. He's saved, he's built, he's got side plans. And we get to meet with a lot of these successful people. And then we have some that come on their budgets. They've at least got their residual income. Then you get others that actually make none at all. They come with a backpack or they come with a small bag. They bring just a little bit of money with them, a thousand US. And they don't have a return ticket plan. They don't have, which is part of a thing that you should do. Um, that's one that I'm actually mentioned is that an actual return ticket is very important that you keep it um, in case you have to go back for medical, like enough money for it. Um, also, these people don't deal, they only deal with medical one day at a time. Oh, I'll never get sick. And they come here in their mid sixties and they come sometimes without residual income. They talk about, they're going to use YouTube money. They talk about they're using Bitcoin money. They talk about that. They're doing an online job. This, these are all issues that can actually become a problem guys. And, um, I get so happy when I see people that make, you know, good plans because I was telling George, um, that we always tell people do your own due diligence, look into your own things, watch other channels, get ideals from financial planners, make all your big plans before you come here, have your health check, you know, full workup of everything, have MRIs and blood work and really get yourself checked out before you come here. And those that make all those plans are successful. And me and George thought we had somewhat of a plan when we actually came here. We were kind of like the middle of the road people. We brought savings and money for medical. We still have some medical back in the U.S. Um, we thought we had planned for everything. And George is an actual citizen here. So he lived in the U.S. for quite a while. Best of both worlds. But things happen, guys. And, you know, but we just say those guys that are just backpacking and a thousand dollars it's that's kind of scary too i mean i kind of wish i had that mindset let's just let let it go where the wind blows oh yeah let it go where the wind blows let it go let it go where the wind blows i combined two songs so yeah manny c <laughs> hello heidi and georgian everyone else Keep. Yeah, the euro is up on the rise. One yeah. euro equals 62 pesos. Yes. 62 chess almost there. Heidi, I'm getting off the hamster wheel at 60. You... Right. George, I need a choop, choop, choop. Ready? I'm going to do the hamster wheel. You do a rat sound. Uh, right. Mouse, ready? What? You can't give me a, a mouse sound? He said he's getting off the hamster wheel. Can you do a crap to go? That was the sound of a hamster getting off the wheel. Oh, okay. okay. Ready? Ready? There you go. See? There you go. I have fun with George all day. You guys can only imagine. You don't have to address this now, but I need to know what percentage of my Social Security I'm going to lose at 62 when I file. Yeah, that's... Um, that... 
or message me on that. Uh, really, it's hard to say. That's, I think that is ever changing. But actually, you should be calling Social Security and asking them what the amount is. I know it's two different amounts. I couldn't tell you. Um, I'm just being honest with you on that one. I would have to literally look to see what the current loss is if you file versus... And the reason being is I'm on direct disability and it's disability that I paid into. So I am allowed to leave the country and collect and everything else. So what will happen to me is at 62, they remove me from disability and I'll start getting regular social security. Is it going to affect me? And I could have collect more. Yes, but I've been on it for over 10 years right now uh, with multi medical conditions. And so um, that's why I don't know is because mine is disability. So, um, but, I can check into that while you're, but I'm, I know it's a percentage. I just don't know. Grumpy dude, Brian, clone chicken, leave it to big pharma and big foodie to come together, create what they call, what they claim is healthier than, than what a billion years of evolution have given us. Can you say Soylent Green? Hmm. Well, the healthier part means is because I'm, I'm talking about in theory here. In theory, since the chicken did was not fed any, um, hormones you know or or anything like that so technically it's pure that's the healthy part however like you said like um what a billion years of evolution have given us can you say so? okay one second that's what was in my head i started to say 30 percent it is 30 percent it wow, says direct that's a big hit yeah that's yeah. that's direct but but that is direct from Social Security. I just want to double make sure. Yes, that is the U.S. government Social Security up to 30%. If you retire at 62, by you doing that may result in up to a reduction of 30%. And that's what yeah. was in my head. So if I didn't say it out loud, so 30%. Yeah, but it's it's, it. it's better to retire early on, to be honest with you. We discussed if some people really want to do that. I mean, if your check is in close to that sweet area like right now mine is at 1400 and do we travel a lot and do a lot of expensive things expensive items not really but we live in the philippines at our amount of money that we bring in each month we're at least middle class to middle upper class so that's the area that we're dealing in that's the home that we're living in we have two bathrooms with running water which counts and hot water and all the essentials so we don't have to worry about our monthly bills. We'd like to have more savings um, towards medical for like something major that we wouldn't have to go back to the U.S. But um, no. Uh, so if your check's around two grand a month and it's just you or nineteen hundred, I would consider it sooner than later. Waiting another ten years, it's really hard saying, you know, what would actually and depends on a lot of things taken account, but. That's up to each individual person and look into it for yourself and what you actually think. If you have a super large amount and you can actually do it, yeah, I would, you could definitely live. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And again, Grumpy, just real quick, again, like you said, there's there's still a chance to have these um, grown meat to get contaminated with something else that we've never encountered okay. before. Okay. So, yeah, I agree with you. No, man. Are you making a mess? Mm hmm I am. Kiki says, I'll be back again on June 2nd. Oh, that's pr pretty soon. Um, the diaper wipes, please. That blueberry just squirted out of here, guys. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. LG, money exchange dollars to pesos usually lower over the weekend and goes back up on Tuesday. Okay. If there's no foresee unforeseen problems and also dollars this week during Christmas because that's lots of OFWs visiting during christmas that's what i thought thanks lg so the weekend i wouldn't do it mm -hmm. well post office joe says you lose about eight percent per early year yeah hey henry said 30 percent henry fortnight in the house love birth see that's that's a little kid right there <laughs> he's yeah so he's super cute super super cute yes that's a little kid with um really long eyelashes LG, Social Security 
if a person collects 62, I think only 75%. Well, yeah, that's about right. If collected at 66, six, six, seven years, you need to live beyond seven, seven years I'm sorry. to benefit some, some from waiting. All the way up to that point, And then they pass away three, four years later. Yes, that's why, for the most part, mm -hmm. my, again, my opinion is um, retire earlier because, honestly, most people don't make it that far. They live five years, ten years, maybe beyond yeah. when they're collecting that check. And here, with the expenses being less, unless you run down to Walking Street and you're spending four or five hundred U.S. dollars a day on liquor and ladies, you know, and other expensive hotels and playgrounds over in Barack Eye and a bunch of other things that waste all the money, guys, then you should be more than okay on a decent amount of Social Security. And if there's only, uh, mm, yeah, there's a run. Ooh, take the money and run. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, take the money. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. No, no, I'm asking because that's the thing I don't see. Um, Cody Williams, I think. Who? No. Oh, okay. No, I would bet that the girls are on. Oh, Cody Williams, I think. <laughs> I always think I'm close to retirement until I hear the number 48. Retirement is still only 17 years away. Aw. Mm -hmm. Clara M. You can go online to get exact. Awesome. Dollar amount, right? That's what I did. You'll receive about 75% of what you'll receive for retirement. My break even amount was age 80. Oh, every year past 762 will be more. I don't know. Uh, uh, that's why I said check with Social Security, they'll give you exact amount. It's at up to 30% you could lose by, but yes, for every year you wait, it adds more back to you, not less. Every yes, year yeah. they give you more towards that. And, you know, a, a. Yeah. Did uh, shot. Thanks, Post Office Joe. That's what I thought. Clara I just M. knew that we can continue to have George work long hours. And honestly, we've been running this channel for a few years. In a very tight emergency, we probably could live on the Social Security, but or the not the Social Security, but the um, your media money for your company. You know, the social media. We could Filipinos live on less. We discussed that. Well, we could. But <laughs> um, the reason I'm mentioning that is that that here you actually can. And if you continue to work in the United States, you'd be working 16 hours a day. It was better for us to make that decision during the pandemic for early retirement versus, you know, which technically you're still working, but it's you, you got what I mean to come over to the country. And, right, right. It's not the same. And if you had to, you could actually, and some people do, there are people that are vlogging that are living on the, the money. So. Yeah. Yeah. Life is good. Inflation. Hi, host. Hi, yes. life is good. Good morning. And as, here's the point. And like Mr. Fulpy said again, um, if you are guaranteed to live forever, take the money later. Otherwise, take the money and run. Then that's the problem yeah. we see because most people die right after retirement. <laughs> I'm talk, We're talking about the higher ages. Yeah. And that's why we recommend retire early because honestly, you're not going to live much longer after 80 i mean mm -hmm. let's be real i don't expect to live after 80. 72 and then they wait and then within four or five six years unfortunately not scare people you could live to 100. you could some people could. live to 90 and all that but the average what i call real person like in my family in my household back in the united states and people around me i had some rich friends but most of them were middle class or below that only had their base social security and some savings to retire on house is unpaid for they're still paying on it if you stick around and you get sick and then all of a sudden you stop working and you start collecting your social security it'd be really rough to pay some of those bills and there's you know things are going up the crime is going up over there and the people that make that decision to move here it's been some of the best decisions that they've actually made some people live between both countries and i don't know guys the ones that did retire with again um adequate amount of pension or social security. Yeah. 
Um, to the chat, Slamet Heidi and George and Post Office Joe. I'm coming home to the Philippines to the wife in February. That's great. Oh, awesome. Racerack says, as soon as I can collect Social Security at 62, I'm collecting. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Guys, be sure to do a thumbs up on this video. And um, that's what usually when you go out, you'll see the thumbs up. Um, thumbs out, thumbs out, tip, tip, tap on it. And also, guys, yeah, hit that button, George. Oh, uh, yeah. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications and look for our community posts that come through. Um, so let's see. Clara says, my mom retired at 66 and then passed away at 69. See, that's the usual story. And my mother had passed away when she was 50, and she had just started collecting um, her disability because she she fell into um, cancer and other medical problems way before she had been able to collect. And she only had it for like a year before she passed away. And she should have done it sooner. She didn't think about doing it and had financial issues on that kind of money. And so a lot of people don't plan to get sick or pass away early. And I'll tell you what, it's better to come here and live one, two, three good years of warm weather. And, you know, people get into relationships and they become rejuvenated and regenerated. And it's a new lease on life. Even if you just come here and you're humdrum like I am, where I'm more of a, you know, like I like, even if you just come here and just get a place and go out to the markets and talk to the people and eat barbecue and, and friendly kids playing around, it'll feel like you're back in the seventies and eighties again, worse versus being worried and scared about going out and about. And it's just a big difference in a feeling when you actually get here. So. No, it is. Again, the, the nature of the beast in the Philippines is actually very different. As you guys can see on my walks on my e-trike rides, it's not like what it is in the U.S. at all. I'm yeah. talking about like interactions. Like you can see kids just jumping mm -hmm. in with a total stranger because that's how friendly people are. Yeah, George, stop riding. Don't do that. Yes, <laughs> no, don't ride. Stop don't riding kids around the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, um, that's for sure. Um, so we'll start going through um, what me and Georgia discussed all uh, morning about mistakes and uh, things that you know, pitfalls and everything. And we will kind of go through the list. So um, first one that comes to mind is there are people that are using and dipping into their savings as what I would call their own personal piggy bank situation. In other words, they live beyond their means. They have their base bills. They, I get if you need extra things like, you know, you get bit, you get some mosquito cream, things come up, extra medications and, and different things that might happen. But some people will just start dipping in to cover their own monthly coverages because they're living more of an extravagant life than they actually expected. And yeah, on, on the savings deal, again, the first red flag you'll see is when they start making big purchases, for, for instance, a car or a motorcycle, which was not in their initial budget right and then all of a sudden hey you know what it'd be, it'd be really awesome if i had one a car or and then that destroys the entire budget again kind of like expat john and that just bought the motorcycle and yeah and that's that it that took that's away shot. from uh because some people come here and try to retire early with no residual incomes no no plan whatsoever there's several that are here in this area and other areas that recently have come in and that's how they're actually living is on just whatever's been in their account or monthly money that they may be making from something else, but they make that mistake. They buy vehicles. Uh, they try to build houses or start to build houses or they move into something expensive. That's way they're like, Oh, well I'm paying 700 a month. That's way cheaper than I did in the U S right. Western mentality and mistakes. And then, and or, or all three, they start a business. And when they start that business, that's when things could, they just start dipping into what might be for something for the future or otherwise. And it becomes a, yeah, I'm just looking at the comment. From yeah. The yeah. I was, lawyer, but, I, I'm um, finished it. Yeah. So that's something 
that you, I don't know, there were some major, major pitfalls to start um, to actually doing. Yeah. And again, just, just so you guys know, we're actually talking about people who actually contacted us and we're not actually talking about one particular person or people. If we're just so you guys know, we, we get a lot like, of messages and we do get a lot of people contact. Them. And it's reading hey, articles. This is, this is so my it's situation. Like a combination and um, what we're seeing. So right. this is all the above. This isn't towards one person right. or another. So, yeah. Let's see. Hi, Carrie. What's going on, Carrie? What, you want me to go back on there? Yeah. Or? Oh. Um, Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cody says, I'm curious and know a thing and know a thing about it. How China plans on dealing with having their population in as little as 45 years and yet supporting their age population with no immigration. That's interesting, Cody. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that, Cody. <laughs> well, what he's saying is um, China is overpopulated, and because of the population, they're they're reducing their resources. And what it is, it's they're trying to control their population. How they do it, honestly, I don't haven't been doing research on that one, so I can't say anything. Um, is Scott, it China or Japan that only allows two kids. That's China, the start of it. Yeah, they're yeah. one of those. Um, we just released a video about AI in the future. And I think it's being used somewhat now about the technology of making the babies and the pods and stuff, 30,000 a year and just one, you know, what I call warehouse area. So right now they were talking that, yeah, China has a lower birth rate for multiple reasons. But if they're trying to do that, it's hard saying what they're going to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I honestly don't. Um, Scott Extra drops of chlorine in their water. Huh? Scott and the world as I see it. 921 days left before retirement. He has a countdown clock. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Racer X says, my grandma lived to 101. My mom is 85 now, so I'm collecting at 62. Makes sense. Makes sense. Get out there and actually live. Or at least not worry like for us. We're like, oh, well, you're just sitting there and you're not doing anything all day situation. And we don't see you guys on vacation uh, because we didn't come here to run around and be travel vloggers. So, but our bills are paid, you know, like the basis are like our rent, electricity, water. God, how much is our water? $3 a month, including doing laundry here. It's like 400 pesos or something. Okay. 450 Never hit over 500 pesos. Never. So four would be about $7. So yeah, that's with a heavy couple lines, dollars. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't pay attention, but yeah, under $10 water bill. And the same with the phones. We used to pay like a hundred bucks a month. And that was back in the day, a couple of years ago for our cell phones. And now we pay under 20 bucks and we can even run our internet when the power goes yeah, down. And, and, and again, the cell phone internet is actually good enough that honestly, again, if we weren't YouTubers, we can just run off our phones. Yeah, that they're actually, actually good enough. Now it does depend on the area here in Angel City, Mavlakot City, and the Pampanga area. If you go to certain areas, your internet does get. Sketchy. Yeah, it depends on the tower, of course, how far you it are. It depends on the house. You got a lot of solid brick houses here, unlike the United States. So if you go inside, like our other place, and we had a metal gate in the front, we couldn't get globe door well, at all. We had to step outside yeah, and take a phone call. If you're using, well, Philippines uses GSM. Which means it has a low penetration rate, which means whenever you're under like like through concrete or metal roof or anything like that, your signal gets chopped up. It does. Yeah. It does. Carrie Lalon, I'm lucky and have good savings and pension coming at sixty. I do not have to depend on on social security, but I calculated and would be foolish not to start social security at sixty two and wait until sixty five. I could lose about hundred K waiting. Yeah, so you got to kind of figure. Yeah, you do the math. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's worth it or not. Yeah. Racer X, planning on living in the U.S. Philippines when we're trying to be going back and forth. Yeah. Um, Comanche says, I'll be living in Timog Hill subdivision in Barangay Pampanga. Pampang, sorry, Barangay Pampang. Is it a nice? Yes, it is. It is. Well, let me say, depends on his definition. People should have. Has he been here yet to the Philippines? I don't think so. 
Okay, so if Comanche Warrior hasn't, I think he's been following a few of the other channels where two of them have recently moved into that area. Okay, if you blindfolded me, honestly, if you blindfolded me and I'd never been here before and you put me in there, I wouldn't consider it an upper class neighborhood or a middle class neighborhood in the United States. In other words, uh, the front facade being shown and the inside is just a typical place. Once you get on that main street on the outside of that little blocked area, then it looks a little different as far as right. looks. What, what Expectations yeah. and reality of even that area is... Yeah, you know, what she's saying is, again, don't... They're showing all the pretty stuff. Don't, don't <laughs> expect um, westernized living. I mean, it, it does look... It's nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it's nice. It's nice. It, it's still not. It's still not going to be what you're accustomed to in the West. Just so like, you know. like honestly, I feel the neighborhood we're in now was better than the last one. Would I move in there? Like, would I live where I am now or move there if I thought family members or I was trying to impress somebody? Um, I think the areas. I mean, I personally, I don't know. Maybe I would move over there to that area, but that's kind of far out there. You're definitely going to well, need a car. I was car. going to say. You're it, going to need a car, the, motorcycle, something. Yeah, you will need a vehicle. I was going to say. It's, again, it's a nice area, but you will definitely need a vehicle. I, most It's nice. We're most not, nice places in the we're Philippines saying, are usually somewhat, not remote, but a, a little bit off away, off like, the road. To me, kinda. I like Candy Palace. It's super nice, but step right outside of Candy Palace and bam, you're right back into reality again that the... You know, there's things going on on the outside of the building and, you know, it's just reality. That's all. Is it, you know, is it nice? Yes. The actual streets inside there and. Well, what Heidi's saying is, again, um, by experience again. If that was a neighborhood in the United States and I had other choices of moving to another area, to me, that would still not yeah, be. What Heidi's saying is, again, for instance, Candy Palace is a great example. Actually, she brought it up. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, honestly, you walk in there, you're like, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the into the rooms, you're like, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the balcony, you stand outside, and you could see street kids playing in mud, you know, playing with scrap. No, I'm, I'm not making Trash this up. Trash on the ground. Right. That's what Heidi's saying. Broken um, down houses. Be aware that what she's saying is... You're seeing those two or three bloggers that I, I'm sure that you're watching. They're showing the prettier side. Do, don't buy it in advance and send money before you arrive or buy because you see these two. Because that's going to get around to one of the topics that we want to talk about. Is It's not as much as keeping up with the Kardashians or whatever. It's going to be the reality of living versus what somebody else is actually doing versus like affordability like so you'll see the the actual people that move here there are some that just spend money they import cars they're blowing money left and right you're thinking wow it must be really easy to spend money and it's cheap living there you know because when you first get here you're in that mode to spend the money and so you're trying to impress the women and your friends you start buying things big ticket items to look there is some sort of macho thing that goes on in this town that people are trying to outdo each other um, in this general retirement area. It's They're the trying one -up to mentality. one up mentality. And, Don't fall for that. Right. Or they start like if someone buys the car, then the next guy is buying something nicer and bigger. And I don't even think they really can afford it. And so they're going into their savings and they're doing things. But you're, you're going to see where I think they're living beyond their means or maybe they super plan for their retirement and they do have this incoming income but people see this and they're coming in on 1800 a month like i did i actually seen all these channels and seen other retirees before i actually moved to the philippines okay but by the way vacationing and being here once doesn't really count account for actually moving here that was another mistake that i actually made visiting once is not the same as you know, moving here. So I'm like, wow, well then we should be able to put a bunch of money away and I'm going to have a housekeeper and we're going to be vacation. I really, in my mind thought on our income 
and by seeing other YouTube channels and other social media. And it's just not one. So I'm not going to place it on that. Um, and that's not me downing them. It just gives the illusion, especially some of these channels that got one or two million views. What they don't tell you is they've got another 6,000 a month. And I said others, you know, and so they're spending higher. And so the reality, you have to kind of come down. So when you mention that area, I've seen that area. I've seen the outside of what that place looks like. And it's, you just, it depends. I mean, is he living in a very nice middle-class neighborhood in the United States where everything's clean and it's quiet and no vendors, you know, it's, it's all to the imagination for sure. What, I don't know. You could not take the average American even to T-Mog and expect them to be like, wow. If you took them straight to the airport there, they're not going no, to no, be No, no, no. That's no, that's what I, not, that's what I said. It is a nice area. I'm not downing it by any means, but be aware the it's not are different. It's they're not what you're used narrow. to still, not what you're used to. Yeah, because people are used to yeah. the wider houses and here in the Philippines they tend to make these narrow houses um that go more long ways. Actually, I'm surprised than, this this place is actually big. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been in a lot. Of, I've guys. been in a lot that's, of houses, um, and actually, I'm surprised this this house is actually that, bigger than normal. I'm imagining that's why he's asking because there are two recent vloggers that are actually living there and constantly showing it. They're within the realm yeah. of book, who are book an Airbnb are. first, then yes. check it out. Then check it out. Okay. Do not send money for it. Don't send somebody else on Facebook on anywhere for, for that matter. Don't send money. <laughs> period. Right. Don't do that. Come and until see you're here, the yeah. areas that you want to because. If I'd have planned that in advance, I'd have been like, well, let's just buy a place in Candy Palace, you know, and it, we just would have, you know, in advance sent money and then that would have been. Oh, boom. Candy, Candy Palace, really nice. Um, yeah, because they sell units. But the reality is, is once you get to that area on a permanent basis, I wouldn't want to actually live in that section neighborhood anyways. There's a lot going on in that neighborhood. I'm not saying it's super dangerous. Angel of City is what it is. Well, I mean, it's yeah, it's would just you, like any other right, city, yeah. right? But would you live on a permanent basis there in Candy Palace? I could, if yeah, I don't see why not. On a permanent basis, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it is a beautiful place. Well, yeah, we like. But what it. I'm so saying is, for the I price, would build for that for price. the that's what I was saying for the okay. price. Right, there's that's better what options. I mean, better options. There's better options, right? Yes, and that's the same with that. There might be better options, or you know. Yeah, and again, Team Oak. Again, I'm not downing. It, but no, be aware it's... when you've arrived there, it's still not to American standards. Just so you guys know. You mean you're gonna have um, in them places they had to install their own hot water. That's not incoming hot water. A lot of these things, you know, have to be added in there. You have to install ACs and. There's no central air in those. And so there's a lot to. Yeah. You have to install a Jetmatic, AKA water pump. Um, Cause some, we have a water pump here. Cause again, the water pressure is low. Mm -hmm. So again, it, again, it, again, I'm not saying it's a, it's a nice place. Yes. It's a nice, but be aware. It's not American standard. Yet. I wouldn't up and up my roots right now, right where I am now to run over to that area to do that. So, and it also means anybody that doesn't own transport will have to get transport. I think driving here in the Philippines is dangerous. So yeah. I, I, that's my you know, thing. So where, where? No, go ahead. There. Mr. Fluffy, when using your U S credit card at store, pick, very, okay, that's very good. Um, pick peso, not dollars. Your bank will give better exact rate. Otherwise, the bank and the store system uses will rip, rip you off an exchange rate. Now, this is very true. Mr. Fluffy said it right. Okay, be aware. There's a lot of loggers. They'll tell you other all. Oh, pick dollar. No, do not do that. Pick peso. It will mm -hmm. give you the better rate. Okay. Right. Be aware of that. So yes, Mr. Fluffy, you're right, absolutely very, correct. Very correct. Dollar. Um. Great information. Hey, look who's here. Hey, good morning, Geechee. Anwar, how are you doing? Hi, George and Heidi. Hey, hey. Tito Cha says, please hi hit the like button for this wonderful couple. Oh, thank you so much, Tito Cha. Thank you, guys. Hey, 
Yeah, you're. Um, how far is the bus stop from Timo Gills? And do I need an Uber? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. All right. So that already answers. He doesn't have plan for transport. A lot of those places you have to have. You have to have a transport, transport. for that one. Yeah. Yeah. When when we first got here, um, we looked at a place that was going to be like four or five hundred U.S. a month. It was over there in Clark, and we pay half of that here. And these places were so pasted up against each other. The Grab, okay, they don't have Uber here anymore, but they use what's similar to it. It's Grab. They was able to take us there, but he warned us that once he dropped us off, he That's wasn't going to be able That's to it. pick us up. That's how far out it actually was. And we were getting zero reception out there on internet. Yeah, or that's anything. another thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. You could have issues at Tima. We don't, we really don't know like how well their internet is. Some oh, of those no, no. vloggers are, it's good there. It should be good. Yes. Yes. That They're area. not going to coffee shops and in town to do stuff. Well, no. But what I'm saying is he's going to definitely need an, get a, well, an Uber. I, I call it Uber because Uber doesn't exist here anymore. Um, um, could be a little bit of a distance. They call it a grab ride. So, but yeah, basically you will need a, to take a cab. Basically, that's the best way to explain it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of distance. So social security, timely subject for the soon to be retiree. All right, Geechee, California Oscar. How much money do you guys think need in the Philippines to live per month and live comfortable after living there as long as you have? What do you recommend, babe? monthly income 25 comfortably if it is just you by yourself depends if you're going to travel if you want to throw traveling in and living what you would consider middle class not like going crazy and going to a resort out on like a nice nice resort that kind of expensive living alcohol all that i don't know 25 2500 yeah. and yeah. then just have expectations with the price rising. That's what we call the sweet spot. Yeah, probably 225 3000 somewhere between 2 and 3 but 2500 if it's actually just you and sometimes we say add the 1000 but here's the thing like I said our personal life right now on average, I don't know, we're, we're at 2000 and under, but we don't do any traveling. We do take care of extra cats and medicine and vet bills, equipment. Um, and it does. We have to buy these cards. Our SD cards are $20, $30. It just keeps going, guys. The expenses keep going. So it depends. I have my own medical. Um, I spend money on medications. You got to remember all of your extras when you're actually doing this. So, um we are close to two, you know, at our level right now. And we do okay, but we're not doing extra traveling. Uh, we we're saving. So it just kind of depends. Our yeah. groceries go to a few hundred a month. I bet it's gone up a hundred just since we've been in the country as far as buying things, the meat and different things. And, you know, we eat out on the occasion. You guys see us go to eggs and breaky. Usually we go to eggs and breaky breakfast. Like that's about, I don't know. What is, what's the average that you remember paying off to the, the girls 400 yeah about 400 500 under under 500 under pesos. 10 and it's a good amount of food so versus if we we're in the u.s that same meal yeah that's with us 20 and that's 30. with coffee drinks and we don't go to super expensive two plates, places yeah, no, anymore that's, that's unless good. we're like treating for you know the same as people would just you know do on an average retirement like my grandparents and stuff they'd go out on the occasion they'd go on a vacation on the occasion go places and so I don't know. We're on two. So yeah. I would say I would like to add more income, probably sweet spot of 2,500 to three. If you really want to get out and do a bunch of stuff or go, you know, Vietnam, some places. Yeah. 25 to yeah. three. What would you call eggs and breaky level? Like, um, um, cracker barrel. That, that's my thought. When I eat their food, it kind of goes into the cracker barrel realm, the, the taste. What's your yeah, opinion? Yeah, I think it's more like the other one that I liked, Waffle Bob Evans? House. No, Waffle, Waffle House. House to Bob Evans like because Waffle it doesn't House have that large without menu. without the bacon gr grease. Yeah, because they they do things they they do. It's not they don't have a lot of specialties that are they have like American food like they have great chicken and waffles they have, and it's inexpensive. I think yeah. it's like two dollars for the plate of food, so it's. You know, no, it's really good. Okay. It's really good. It's yeah. really simple. It's, really it's that simple, and it's actually good. But yeah, <laughs> Mr. Fluffy says I used my credit card several times yesterday and got exact 
55.85 on conversion. Again, remember mm -hmm. to use pesos. Yeah. Okay. For the most part, for the most part, it's a rare instance that you have to use a dollar, um, which probably is almost never, but anyway, yeah. um, Comanche warrior victory liner from Duke to Pass I city in to Man in Manila is how long? Okay, if you look online, it says an uh, R forty. But when I used to make that trip, it's usually only an hour and a half. But I don't know if it's because the drivers are driving too fast or not. I don't know. But either way, an hour, an hour and a half, or an hour and forty five minutes is about average. Yeah, yeah, it's about right. Tammy J, good morning, Heidi and George. Morning, Tammy. How are you doing? Good morning. Clarence, what do you recommend when entering the Philippines, coming to the U.S. dollars and converting it for withdrawing pesos at the airport? And what is the minimum that you can withdraw at ATMs? Okay. I wouldn't be carrying... There's... Hmm. It's... Yeah, this is one of those topic because well, I know you're not allowed to bring more than so we want to mention I believe it's ten thousand. Ten, yeah, ten thousand. Yeah. We brought in under a thousand, but I wouldn't announce that before you leave situation. <laughs> um, it's still a lot to bring in, so a couple hundred U.S. We left everything. We have a bank in the U.S., and so you can just use your debit card everywhere, but let them know that you're actually leaving. Um, like I said, we withdraw and they, do they give the option on the pesos when it comes out? Cause George is the one that stands in front of the machine most of the time. Do they? No, it just automatically does that when you're actually doing that. Um, usually here in Angel City, it's going to be a matter if it actually has money in it. A lot of the ATMs in the Philippines don't on average, it's 10,000 each withdrawal. Correct, George? Some of the other banks have 20. So expect on average 10,000 if it's available. When it's a busy weekend or a holiday, they can limit it down to 5,000 pesos, yes. which is about $100. Right. But you can like do multiple withdrawals and you're actually going to get hit by it. They'll charge so, you 250 pesos per transaction. Yes. So, yes, yes. So that's... Oh, um, this is something that... And I kind of... I don't know if they really want to exchange it there in the airport either. Do they want to really wait? Oh, and bring in those $100 bills. Yeah, yeah. Like trading in the yeah, 20s and 5s. Yeah. And we, as you see, we still got a $20 bill up there on the wall. But they like to see those hundreds. So, And they need to be pretty much new bills. So people claim they brought in torn bills. But they're real particular about foreign money. So I'd make sure you... Like we did, we ordered that money up in advance. Yeah. And when possible, when you use an ATM, use an ATM that is attached to a bank that's open for the random chance that that ATM will eat your card. You can take it out from the bank itself. Right. Or do a wire transfer. That's another thing is people make the mistakes and they close down everything in the U.S. Like, you know, they don't even keep the U.S. bank open. They're actually, you know coming here there are some that actually have bank accounts here that they're wiring their social security into and i would definitely keep one or two banks or for sure in the u.s for wire transfers for your money Comanche warrior i was stationed in longapo when i was in the navy and my wife is filipino oh victoria says happy sunday george and heidi and everyone hello happy hi victoria sunday. It's her. No, we're not letting you out, big girl. <laughs> well, you can if you want to. Daniel Nets, when it comes to collecting Social Security, every check you receive belongs to you. Every check deferred belongs to the government. It is much better to collect sooner than later, rather than later. Makes sense. Dorothy Durning. Good morning, George and Heidi. Hope you have a wonderful day. Aw. No, I'm just crossing off what we talked about. Just a bill. Candy Palace sounds like Atlantic City Boardwalk right next to the slums. You're going to see a lot of that in the Philippines. You can be right in the middle of Makati and it looked like super rich Manhattan. It's like New York. You step over a few blocks and then it could be a hot mess situation. It's, it's the same here. I just know that 
I mean, I get that I'm a woman in my 50s and I mean, I've traveled the world. So I, I get where there are poor countries and how things are built and how people live and have an uh, expectation. But it does hit some people pretty hard. They're like, you know, the infrastructure kind of surprises you. What I was surprised at is what I seen on social media, which I was going by and what I was going by was other channels and other photos that I've seen. They're only showing you the sweeter side of situations like where everything is. So when I researched that place a long time ago, and it was quite some time ago and looked on Google maps, go to Google maps and look on the outside and look around it. You'll see the rest of the area. The photos might be old, but Google Maps is actually Google Earth, Earth is the best way to go look at the surrounding areas, and you'll see it's way yeah, out in the middle view. of nowhere. Yeah, street view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's like Clark too. You have to have a vehicle, and for most people, you don't want to take on the responsibilities and the worries of driving, especially the traffic. To me, is five times worse than New York or being in the middle. What's that? highway in california where it always gets backed up and you get stuck and all that you just don't want to be stuck in traffic if it wasn't for like the e-trike that we use we avoid actually, manila at all costs it's kind of like you <laughs> we're able to go on the side track yeah. and go around cars i wouldn't want to be sitting in a vehicle and regular motorcycles you're not allowed to go around either so yesterday it was up to 104, 106 yesterday. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be on a motorcycle sitting in traffic for 20 minutes. And that's it. A lot of times in our area and angel city and different areas, at least on the little e-trikes like me and George, we zoom right on the side, but you're not allowed to do that. I mean, I've seen some motorcycles do, but usually you're not supposed to, right. And you don't want to get caught. They're ticketing more and more people on that situation. So, and if you're in a car, yeah, I mean, I get you get air conditioning, but you know, yeah, so I, you have to have a car to get to some of those places, and it doesn't make it any better. It doesn't, you know, always yeah. mean better. Certain areas, like for instance, uh, Alonga Po, Zambales, um, if you have a car, that's great because um, traffic isn't as isn't bad. Yeah. But areas like um, Central Angles, that's horrible traffic. Um, Manila is another level, all all on its own again. <laughs> It makes Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia traffic like cakewalk. If you go to Manila, trust me, it's oh, horrible. Wow. You see that, babe? Yeah. It's a mommy with her puppies running around California, in the Philippines. Aww. California, Oscar, where you live now, is that the is that the Chinese place ever live in your whole life? Huh? When we used to live in the United States, that's a comparison. Hey, George, where you live now, is that the Chinese place ever live in? When we used to live, what does that mean? Oh, no, no. He says George's smallest. No. Oh, he meant smallest. Hey, George, where you live now, is that the smallest place you ever lived in your whole life compared to the United States? No, this is pretty good size for 200. We have, I think it's still time for George and me to clean the house up. It's not yeah. really bad off. It's just lived in. No, it's not the smallest place, but. If we had, it is smaller, yes, definitely. If we had two kids living here with us, even teenagers, it's it's definitely we have two bathrooms. The bedrooms, in comparison, are small. Like in Timog, what's his name? Just got a place over there, and he's moving his family over there. He can barely fit a bed in one of those rooms. You're going to have a bed in that room, and that's it. Oh, that's another thing. You will encounter <laughs> houses that you can't fit in a queen size bed. You can only fit in. Single twin beds. beds it's kind of weird then you're not going to put a bunch of stuff in there so um with western mentality like me uh george was getting western mentality because when i married george i found that you were a semi-pack rat you like to collect you had a lot of collectibles that were what were some of the collectibles that you had what do you mean your gundam all, all the stuff that you had in the garage and boxes yeah what was it what do you mean oh it's an innumerable really it's a lot Okay, like what? I asked you what the items were. You were a collector of stuff. Yeah, I collected Gundams. And? I was a Warhammer artist. Okay. Yeah, babe, it's a lot. I mean, a okay, lot. Okay, well. Yeah. Can you? Hmm? What? I collect, babe, I collected everything. George, I mean. you're a man of many words. <laughs> For sure. Okay. <laughs> so, in comparison, the places are small. 
Yes. I've are. lived in bigger, probably twice the size. Um, On average. To half the size. Yeah. I've lived in studios when I was living single. And the place that I was living in before I met George was a mother-in-law apartment. And so it's not a... You know, yeah, on average, yeah, house. on average, the, the dwellings here are, are about half size on average. Right. Yes. So George lived in a house that had a swimming pool and everything, full size house, two car garage, everything. Yeah. So, no. If you two were rich enough to have a no staff needed yacht and live on it, where in the Philippines would you spend most time parked in the Oh. That's a good question. Is he he's saying, "What if if we had a yacht, where would we live?" They have them here, do they not? No, 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 no. There's several. No, she's asking, well, "Where would you live if you had a yacht?" Choose an island. That's basically what he's saying. Kind of like like sea or yeah, like yeah. For example, sea or yeah, um, Boracay or probably um, a longer pool, actually. Yeah, George would know. I'm not familiar enough to know where the weather really rocks in or where it's safe. Where that's. Where I would go you... to a Longapo if I, okay. if I wanted like, quiet. You know. Tito Cha says on BDO you can withdraw up to 2500 five, 50, mm, Not I not where. That's a rumor. Not where we're at. That has to be something new, Tito. It could be new or, or it could be or the area because yeah. the most we've heard from other people and we've experienced is 20,000. So yeah. we don't have a video account. So rarely that's a rare instance, but I've never heard of 2,500. Yeah. Well, in our area, no, we, we, we've tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually it's 10 on average, 10 to 20. If, if it's video 20. Yeah. PNB. PNB is a good bank, Gichi. What do you mm -hmm. feel? Actually, I remember when I was a kid, I actually had a bank account in PNB. Jammer Travels. Greetings from Pennsylvania, USA. Okay, Teaser Shah says if you have an account with BDO, it's $2,500. If you don't, it's $10,000 withdrawal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn B. That's probably why we couldn't get anything more. Yeah, it's this. possible. That's what it is. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn B. Dang, I'm late. Hi. Hi, hi, Dangerous. Hi, Glenn. Good morning, Glenn. Can take out, LG says, can take out 20 grand from PCI, but need to type in the amount. Also, get the Charles Schwab bank account, checking account, if occasion. All fees are reimbursed at the end of the month. Yeah, Charles Schwab is one of the good ones. Oh, yeah. Um, just real quick talk about banks since we're talking about banks real quick. New York Mellon is pulling out of the Philippines. And it's not because of the Philippines. It's because New York Mellon is pretty much downsizing. They, they think it's going to fall. Bank, it's a It's a bank. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's. Yeah. No, no, no. I Since we're all anything. talking about banks. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't see. But, Where did you but, but what I'm saying is. Information? Oh, it's on the news. But okay. here, here's the thing. It's not because of the Philippines. It's because the bank itself is on the verge of collapse. Yeah. It hasn't. It has nothing to do with the Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. Because yeah. it sounds bad. Like, because that's how they made the headlines. Like, you know, Mellon Bank is pulling out of the Philippines. I'm like. And then hmm. you find out there's a problem with that. Yeah, it's, bank there's a problem with country, that bank. Of course. Yeah. Usually yeah. There is. So don't buy that stock. Yeah, that's the same as some of the other businesses that fold. There's a lot of them that opened and closed during the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the Philippines because nobody was buying. Because let me tell you what, people are balling and spending all day long here in the Philippines. Don't think that people are. They just opened up a second landers in this area. They're getting ready to. And you're like, wow, who could you know, four to fourteen dollar jar of tang or something, you know, when they're at X amount of wages. There's a the OFWs and stuff. And there's a lot of money that's being generated into the country. And so get off me, George. Mm-hmm. Where's my frog? Talk to the Where's frog. your frog? But I'm gonna kiss the frog. Kiss the frog. 
Aww. Love you. Mm -hmm. Love you. <laughs> George, when you lived in the United States, did you ever live in a place? A Is this the same question? Just no, rewarded? No, he's just rewording it. Maybe he was just rewarding Okay, yeah. It. You ever live in a place as small as the places they were in the Philippines? Yeah, like I said, usually these are half size. Um, everything's half size. Like uh, the the bathroom door again. It's lit literally two foot wide. Well, here's the thing. I grew a major appreciation. So, like I said, I lived in a mother-in-law apartment by choice. Okay, I had lived in some big, expensive places with prior boyfriends and different things, and lived in much bigger places. But by choice, I lived in a mother-in-law apartment to be with my dad for many years when I met George. There was plenty of room for me. It was a, you know, an open studio like you would see well, in New York, way more that's, room than in New York. That's a good example. Like again, that's that's just mother law. This about that's about the right size of this bottom level only. Right. And so, that's only but after we lived in Mexico, my oh, yeah, we yeah, learned yeah. space. Even the <laughs> yeah. cabin out in the mountain was super small. Yeah, so yeah. We pretty much had one small area that was a kitchen, and then we had the bedroom. There's nothing more to that cabin than that. And yeah. then when we got here, we was in a four-bedroom house yeah. in Angel City that was Airbnb. We always recommend Superhost Airbnb. We use it for all of our travel. I've used it in the past, so it's a good idea for checking out islands. Yeah, that's available. about um, the family home. That's what it looks like, and that's the same layout. And everything. It's, really, it's really It's really big. nice. It's and nice then, and big. You just start getting more and more appreciation. And then we went into our first place, which was smaller than what we're living in now. And then here we are with two bedroom, two bath. Um, we we live here by choice. Where we love that there's two bedroom, two bath. Um, we've got you know where we're gated in and everything, balcony and everything. Um, the only thing I don't like that happens a lot in the Philippines is the two level homes. Yes, that's this is common. This is a two story. Home. Bungalows aren't as available. Right. They look more to me like townhouses. A lot of them are the townhouse style, like what we're living in. A lot of people live in or apartments, but the apartments can get a lot smaller. So you can live in a one room place for four or five thousand pesos, a hundred bucks a month. Or you can live in something as expensive as a few thousand a month. So but the same place you're living in that costs two thousand a month in the United States would probably be six thousand a month. The, the comparison you're paying way less rent to half to a quarter what you'd pay for the places in the U.S. But the neighborhoods or the expectations or what you have to do to set it up. Most of them have no refrigerators, no stoves in it, no hot water. Even the expensive ones, you got to go in. So unless you're going into an Airbnb where it's already set up. No and shower. All you can Showers leave. is not standard. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it just depends on, you know, like your level. But no, I wouldn't probably say for you that it's. Yeah, again, like I said, most of these places are half the size of what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, when I met George for years, years, and years, he was in an oversized house with a swimming pool. So it's. But again, like when we got this place, Heidi's knees were still kind of okay, but now they're not good anymore. So we're staying on the first level. But it does have when a plus we side. Met, yeah. Now, well, there's a plus side going on. As I'm losing weight, it does help with the pressure on my knees. Now, all the arthritis and stuff and cutting out of sugar has been helping and everything. So I've been, I go upstairs on the occasion, and the more I start moving, the better. But some days I'm just so riddled with arthritis. It's everything. Not even my hands actually want to hold a fork, so it just gets yeah. that bad. Well, the good thing about the having a balcony upstairs is that's where our AC lives, and that's where our generator lives. And what I'm saying is, yes, generators are important. In guys. in the other house, since it's one level, it's a bungalow. When when I turn on the generator, the fumes kind of still permeate into the house. Hey, welcome back, yeah. Grumpy Dude Bryant. But now that we have a second level, the generators on the balcony, the fumes don't affect us anymore. Hey, when hey. I turn on the generator, so that's always a plus inside. Hey, Grumpy Dude, what's going on? I'll have to watch uh, Calvin's live later. So he's live right now. That's my boy. Cedric That's Edwards. My boy. Hey, babe, could you imagine me and Calvin doing a live together? Yes. Good morning, <laughs> you got guys and gang. We'll be heading up to oh, yeah. Tarlac, Tarlac, Angles area next week to visit my sister and check out the area. Oh, that's good. That's good. Tarlac oh, is, the, is like the border town to Mubalaka. Yeah, we have to set up. 
um, breakfast or lunch with our boy. And maybe Cedric Chosen wants one. to meet. Yeah. Mr. Maybe Cedric wants to hook up. We can hook up at Eggs and Break and get him some chicken and waffles. <laughs> You need to speak in tiny, squeaky voice because the bedrooms are made for him munchkins. Right. Yeah. It's, it is. There, I, I think we did that a long time ago. Size matters. Maybe that'll be our next topic. Does size matter in the Philippines? Well, well, George, do you have to tie like zip line cables on your back and like the size matter? How yeah. are the chairs? Yeah, of course. What how, chairs? How are you fitting in the bathroom? Oh, well, I'm okay, but... Is your head dragging on the ceiling? No. Do you get hit by the awnings because you're an extra tall dude? No. Does your nose hit, hit you know? Because you know, the walls are so close? Well, the thing is, yeah, some, some um, like, uh, bathroom, like, I'm talking about in public, not... They're, they're really uh, small. In public, sometimes they have these shelves that are, like, low. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm average, okay? My point is, I can still hit those shelves with my head. You know what I'm saying? So, on on Heidi, no, she'll definitely hit them. Um, Chad, um, Dub, Chad Dubs, um, when he actually showed up for our meet and greet, he actually had a, a cut. Because he hit those shelves. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was at the... That's what I'm saying. I hit can hit those shelves. It's kind of weird. So watch out for those. Yeah. Grumpy dude, Brian. If you have a yacht, you need a marina. I think the two best choices would be Manila or Davao. I thought along the ball had a marina too. It does, I believe. California Oscar, Heidi. Do you think we barely closer hospital, even though there's a lot of traffic, or live in the monsters? Okay, so. It's always best to live by a hospital nearby. It's not worth, like right now, it's costing us $150, you know, a month to AC a house, probably tops 200 So, I mean, part of the year it is cool where we're actually living. We went a few months without using, two, three months without using the AC when we first got here, barely. Yeah, yeah. We only turned it on on the occasion, but I... I've discussed with George that if we were going to do any moving, it just depends on, you know, how our channel and media grows, whether we're going to um, possibly, you know, move. We still, I still, I don't think I could, I don't think I want to live without the things, you know, the little things like being able to have, like, let's say we're super busy or just want to veg out and watch a movie and we want to have, you know, we need cooking oil and bananas and things delivered cost you one US dollar to not go out in the heat, you know, I would like to have that option. And as we get older, okay, and I say older, 70s, Actually, 60s, that, that's a good I'm point. concerned that that's a good point. Good chance that George will be in a wheelchair long term more than I will. I use it a few times a week um, for like sitting long term or we go to the mall or something for a lot of walking and different things. But I'm concerned about that. So in saying that, living out in some of those provinces a lot of people think they just ride up like the u.s and go down a half a block or something driveway and there they are no some of those you actually when those people live out there they're walking some of them are somewhat remote right, right. very remote so i don't know and like i said like we found a house that was only three grand a full-size house I, I, it even has its yard but the problem we had with it is how remote it is yeah it was and that'll happen here again, reality versus, you know, what you guys are thinking is a lot different. Again, they're not showing you how they got to the actual mountain area. They're just showing right. themselves out in the mountain area. Um, yeah. I think there was that dream blog or whatever, and he was showing how he was living out in the mountains. He didn't show you how he got there every time and right. walking and, you know, he's not taking you along for the entire ride. So you guys really, you know, I over a certain age, everybody coming here, even everybody coming here usually has some sort of health problems, some sort of health problems. I'm taking heart medications. I've got diabetes. I got these other things that are going on. And we're not saying that you guys can't come. I would just be near a doctor like George said, where there's a Jollibee and a McDonald's and whatever else going on is pretty much where there's going to be a decent medical care facility. And literally when I had that medical emergency, God, how long ago was that? Two months ago. Yeah. And I was severely bleeding, having a nosebleed, and it wouldn't stop. We could have walked. 
Right. So well, it's, um, you know, I'd make sure that there's something close, guys. This is what I really recommend. And when I went house hunting, this is what I did. I got the Grab app, okay? The Grab app is what? Is our taxi cab, essentially, right? And it delivers food and they deliver groceries. So. Right. So you get the Grab app. Whenever I get to a place, I turn on my phone and turn on the Grab app mm -hmm. and see if, if I can essentially hail a cab. If you get into an area where you cannot hail a cab, then I think you should reconsider. Because, for instance, sense. your car breaks down if you did have a vehicle or your scooter breaks down. How are you going to get out? Um, again, there, I've been into places. I walk. I walk. I don't and have a problem wanna, walking. You want to be right. independent from certain right. family members too. But certain places I've been in from the house, the closest tricycle, meaning your little pet, pedicab or whatever vehicle the closest one is about two miles i can walk but what i'm saying is that's awfully far it's at our age if that makes any sense yeah for me everything is within a distance because again when you get a car you got to deal with registration the cost of buying it buying new which is more responsible versus buying something used which you can if you have it checked out then you're dealing with traffic. And if you guys get out in the mountains and you're thinking you're getting a car and a motorcycle and driving's easy here because everybody else makes it look easy, you have to see that when you get here. So not every single place. I can go one block away right now and they don't have it, hardly any reception on internet. That's how come when we go out for our lives, it goes in and out. We want to show you, but you guys got to hang with us because the towers aren't hitting the actual signals and everything. So, right. Um, you have to check some people don't how many times how about that guy oh my god when we first got here the guy that was building the house out on the island he didn't check for the they didn't check for in, sig nothing, internet signal no or anything. internet signal nothing he horrible built, i'm like oh my god and he didn't even nice check. house yeah, but, but it wasn't weatherproofed or nothing. He didn't check about the weather yeah. or if anything had been wiped out. He didn't check nothing. He just wanted a place in an area where his woman was out in that area, and he just built and didn't take in. And he did later. He's like, oh, my God, I shouldn't have. And this happens a lot. These yeah, guys check. come here. They yeah. build. Their places are wiped out by floods. And, and we're not trying to scare you. It's the same as the United States. You don't live in certain areas. You don't. You know, people, you have to use that same, you know, thought process. Yeah, but again, like I said, sure. I always recommend download the Grab app, set up an account. Mm -hmm. If you find a place, see if Grab can get to you. And that, also another reason we, for we that love is, Grab. I right, mean, it's a, if a cab can get to you, you know what that means? That means an ambulance can get to you. If a cab can't get to you. And that's another thing. Right. Ca or, you know, ambulances and all that work different here. They do have a 911 system. You can contact the police station. All these things are in place. But to be honest, we I totally panicked during that nosebleed because it went on for two, three hours. And then it stopped and it went on for the entire day. And I was like, you were wanting to call a grab at that time because we didn't have the e-trike. And I'm like, that dude's not going to let me in. I'm gushing blood all over the place. I doubt he lets me in his car. And it's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's right. So then I was like, you know, I guess we could have called 911. We ended up calling his brother. So we have his brother that actually helps. And we got it all taken out. You know, it all finally started coming together. But it was really scary, which taught us to go through and do emergency numbers, which is something we should probably do a video on because. It doesn't work quite like the United States, but very similar. And if you guys start going further out in the provinces, we're not saying not to if that's where her family is. We think it's great. You guys want to spend time, but get your action plan in place when you go to actually do that. So yeah, um, that's for sure. Ichi Lion, thanks for your endorsement of PNB. Um, said your errors. PNB is good. I have both dollar and peso account there. Um, it's PNB and BPI are the main banks here. And then CDO and then the rest. Well, CDO and then Metro. Yeah. What is the best way to get around? Try taxi. Um, it depends on the location. But again, when you find a place that you're prospecting, make sure you have the Grab app already downloaded mm -hmm. and then see if they can get to you. Here's the thing. When you actually do that, you do have to have a Philippine number, I believe, to set yes. those up. 
And when we first got here, it's like we did slow roll. Okay, who's got the best internet in, in the area? Who's got the best phone service? Then we had to figure on, we were still running an international plan from um, the United States. So you want to quickly get a SIM card. A lot of that can be set up in the airport. If you really take the time, no matter what time it is at the airport, I would see about setting that up if it's available, then the Grab app. So um, depending on the area, I mean, we don't know where he's really wanting to, if he's coming to the Angel City area, um, if you're, you know, we know you're in good shape and you don't have any knee problems and all that, then do the trikes. Can you sit in a trike where there's a lot of exhaust around you and the sun's coming through on you and you can, I mean, some people can handle those type of vehicles and others can't comfortably with a Western mindset and inexpensive. The cabs aren't the same price as the U S so from here to the mall is $5 with a tip give or take. So we're pretty close to the mall. Sometimes it's even less than that. We paid as low. Yeah, it's about $5, $5, $6 with the tip. So if we do that in the United States, we're out 20 or $30 for a, a, a grab. So um, that the trike second. And there's a lot of ways to get around. Yeah. No, I, I just got sad there because some, some people will take advantage of you. Some of these drivers, so watch out. Um, California Oscar says, you know, Heidi, they say that, that, that Dumaguete expat and get out, got a place furnished, but it runs 500 to $600 a month. Uh, there's a few of them. Do you know which one he's talking about? I think he's talking about the one we broke down the budget. Yeah. Well, if it is, then it's kind of way off. So I still say that that was off. That was just reiterated. The same gentleman was reiterated on the second channel that it's seven a month. And I still call with a girlfriend living with them and being with them. There's no way, but can you? Yes. And there's nothing, there's nothing really wrong with that. At 500, you're, you know, that's 20, that's 25,000 pesos. Yeah. That's again, that's depending, kind of depending yeah. on the area. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think it's worth, that kind yeah. of money in some of those areas but yeah kind of like in san fernando um, by sm they're run about the same there's reasons the expats go over to dumaguete i think mostly it's because the type of expats that are over there and in other words there's a lot of expats that are from britain and a lot of people want to be around certain vloggers and they're vlogging and so it just depends i think that's you know and that's not a ton of western amenities for that but I don't think it's worth paying 500 for a furnished place either. You're into somebody's used bed and used couches. And if you're coming here long term, you're not going to live in that place forever. You stay there two yeah, years. You could have bought another I wouldn't place get a for furnished. Yeah, if you're living here, no. Don't, we looked don't get at a, a place one. that was 20 to 25 like that. And here we are paying 10 and we bought our own furniture, when we, you know, a house full of stuff when we got here. So a lot of people don't want to deal with the movers, but financially now, like I said, if you guys are making a couple thousand a month, 3000 a month, 4,005, then yeah. If you want to live in an Airbnb or a furnished place and never have to worry about nothing but taking a suitcase or a bag when you leave some people, there's, there's a good percentage of people that like to live like that. Me, I can't see wasting a couple hundred a month, you know? No, cause it's not That's an three, investment. 4,000 no. a year. Yeah. So yeah. us, no. And a lot of the people we deal with are not, um, tons of money and, you know, they're more on the social security side and the average middle-class, you know, people, um, you know, they're not the, we have a lot of people that have done well in their retirement. So don't get us wrong, but you know, we're, we're talking to the, what they call, what they call the working class, the blue collar yeah. factory people that save their whole life. So, yeah. Is there fluffy? The only one bro brokerage company left that will be, Hey, babe. Hmm. I was just thinking about Billy Joel. Yeah. Like, uh, like I can hear theme songs of Billy Joel going in the background. <laughs> I like Billy Joel. He's a oh yeah, he's great. So yeah. That's what I'm saying. He could do our theme song. He's a great us. artist. Yeah. Yeah, we can AI him. <laughs> Open you an account, Merrill Lynch, hey. Fidelity Schwab. All are restricted here, and you can only liquidate your account. In other words, only take money out. When you take required distributions on an IRA, is held for taxes. Have to get it back when you file your tax return. These are surprises you find out 
you move here, it was 10%, now 30%. Okay, so that kind of brings me around to we're not in the future probably going to break down a lot of stuff like that because I can't speak upon this. Everybody's going to be different. Like, I think all that varies on states and different things. You want to check into that. Also, before you leave, check into the tax laws and the bank laws. And um, there, I was discussing the other day that when people open up bank accounts here, as a U.S. citizen, anything over 10000 deposited a year, you have to fill out a specific form. And there's another form also. Now, if you take that same 10000 and you put it into a bank, close it a month later, and then open another one and keep it two months, they're going to hit you for that 30000 It's not just the 10 being move, move, move. And there's all kinds of tax laws that's dealing with your finances and money and where you follow and file and depending on your job and the amount of money, all that's going to change in your taxes. I'm not going to proclaim that we both know all of that. That's extensive. I didn't study that type of law. We didn't study all of that, but check into that before you leave, whether you have state taxes, if you're leaving residents behind, all of that is stuff that a lot, I'd probably say half the people don't look into and all that information is important information, but check for what's dealing with you. There are people that have all that going on. And then there's just the simple people that are collecting social security and a, a pension. And they simply just file like a tax company and then it's done with, or they hire someone here to help them. And, you know, there are people to help with that, but yes, check that out. The same as that full medical exam. That's really important. Yeah. See for George, it's pretty simple, right? George is a real simple man. He, he has insurance. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> He has insurance on his fingers, his magic fingers. Here's some of your magic fingers. He doesn't pay any taxes on that because nobody's, you know, using his magic, magic fingers right now. Um, and we have your um, Brazilian butt lift, but um, it's actually insured like Jennifer Lopez. Oh so my gosh. I have a $50 policy on that in case it goes flat. It's already flat. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Remy Smith, when looking at, pro okay, this is important. Re when looking at pro province properties, when when they say province again, be aware they're saying talk about country or rural. Mm -hmm. We googled close town proper to see what's available. Hospital stores are now the the key word here is hospitals. And the key word is Google. Yeah, <laughs> um, because that's also another reality. Filipino businesses close like no other country I've seen. They may not exist there. They open up uh, shops and everything else, and they just whoop, whoop, especially out in the provinces and they don't exist very long because if they don't do well, and then the, they actually close pretty quick. And they're they somewhat off. Like right now where we're at, this is like a Korean dairy or something. This used to be a business where we're living. The other place used to be a noodle shop in a residential area. Yeah. They allow business. And it still, it still shows on like Google that's yes. yeah. So, so be aware of that. Some of them don't exist, but the hospitals be aware. I would check. Yeah. The bigger, check the level of the hospital. Check SMs and Robinsons yeah. and malls and Jolly B and McDonald's would be the best indication that you're going to get the decent, but we get your talking province. So I would still look up a yeah. McDonald's and a Jolly B and it, it, usually that's where the hospitals I'm like are a fluffy girl. And I got to have my snack. We eat there. Right now we stopped eating there, but we used to probably do it twice a month. We would do something like McDonald's and do like breakfast items and or something at nighttime. We got super busy, but it's not because you need a midnight snack. It's a good indication like like everything down to your Internet and phone service and where you can get your phone and get guys. Yeah. And when you're living out there, too, you're dealing with deliveries and stuff. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's better in those places. When people decide to live that off-grid country life, other country life, they're farming and all that, a lot of them we hear from actually do a lot of the deliveries. You may wait a little longer by a few days to a week, but deliveries are an option too. Where does the Armstrong family live? I love their Ilocos. I think that area is really sweet. So Yeah, okay. that's up north, but um, you go past along the pole, keep going up. Okay, so you mentioned that area. When I say up, I meant north. Because she, she sells the properties and everything, and they keep rebuilding. They just sold the place. They rebuilt. I think they're just going to keep rebuilding as a, as a, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they sell a lot of properties but, up there. But they are isolated, and you're definitely going to need a car. They drive forever to go places. So yeah, and, a, and it all depends on location vehicle. again, too. And I wouldn't want to be, not even at my age, at 50. I mean, 
I don't know. It, again, if something, I always go to that scenario, what if something happens to George and, or what if something happens to me? And if we're both up there in age, we currently don't have a bunch of children that are living here. We have one, one something about possibly coming family, some about visiting, but I don't know about, I don't know. It's kind of like the U S you know, we have to be able to care for each other. I wouldn't want to live outside of an area that we couldn't have medical deliveries, things. Um, we went down. Oh, pharmacies. Don't forget your pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're surrounded by pharmacies, literally. <laughs> big, 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 big. Yeah. Love them. And again, check the hospital level where you're at. And sometimes to get all of our medication, we only can obtain in a major city two weeks at a time of medicine. Yeah. We usually wipe out the, their stocks. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And that's Watson. So every time, and then we have to go to another one and usually they've got 10 or 15 of the pills and it's not like, I don't know. So, and if you go into any major medications like heavy duty pain pills and all that, you do have to pick it up at the actual hospitals and pharmacies there because you're just not going to get it from Watson's. Watson's, the big pharmacies don't carry anything heavy, what I call heavy duty. The just, they just don't. <laughs> yeah. California Oscar, you're right, Heidi. Being close to a medical facility is very important. And there's a vlogger that. Oh, right. Rike. Yes. Oh, my yes. God. Rike. Rike. Glad to yeah, hear that and, you're home. And he almost died because he waited so this. long to go to the hospital. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank goodness. Yes. You went to the hospital, no, got yourself I checked out. That. He's lucky because in the past, that type of infection in the stomach and appendicitis That's and serious. rupturing. He, could, he would have died if yeah. it would have been 20, 30 years ago. But here in the Philippines, you got to kind of click yourself back a few years. Yeah. And if you're in a certain area, it could mean it could mean death. So I'm really glad. Yeah, we're really glad, Rike, that, that you're, you're get, getting better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sarah Tyson. Heidi, I am in Florida and actually save money by letting Publix be delivered. Mm -hmm. Tip included. Not because they are cheap, but I stick to my list. I don't have my minimum $35 delivery. Right. And that's another thing y'all. And I'm not talking about y'all. I mean, anybody listening that, you know, or that's, you know, got their, we got our hater blockers on or our trolls or other people that listen and, you know, like, Oh, I'm talking to the ones that we tend to be busy people. Then we like to spend time together and we're limited to an amount of time that we go out. Like, like I said, if we do our lives and all that, we wouldn't want to go out afternoon at 106 degrees. I'm, who, who wants to go out there and have heat stroke? And that's exactly what happens to healthy people. So we, that's another reason to have delivery done. So what I'm saying when I talk about the haters and the trolls and all that, we hear others talking, other channels talking, other people in social media talking like, oh, Heidi's just sits around all day and she doesn't want to do anything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty smart because when you do shopping like that, Sarah, it's very smart because we have found we save money because when we physically go into a store, you grab more. Holy snikes, there's a lot more in the store. And when me and George first got here from Mexico, it's like Asian galore, all those different snacks and all the different things. We were literally like kids in a candy store. Remember, we filled the entire cart when we first got here. And George is throwing in, we're throwing in peanuts and nuts and all the little candies that they got and all the different foods. And, you know, we, we filled the card up guys and they're like, okay, I think the first time we shopped was 11,000 pesos. This is about a $200 shop, but it was a bunch of stuff for the entire month, garlic, spices, all that was in the cart guys. But when you do that, that adds up quick. So it is smart between our time, the heat, you know, you can only go shop in certain times of the day. Um, it's not as bad as what people, you know, actually put it out to be, oh, you just don't want to go out and do nothing and you're lazy and you damn right. I am. I prefer to let them do the work. It's a, uh, it's, it's a smart win-win well, situation. Like I said, to have then grad. they have to stand in line and lines do take forever. And you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I like to get out and see the people and this, this and that. And, you and do we get it. You do save more when you have it delivered because you don't grab extras. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. And here they, some of the stores do have that. I believe 
Robinsons. Yeah, we've gotten some from Robinsons. If you before. go over a certain amount, it's four or five thousand. I don't have the amount right now. Yes, they'll do the free delivery, but if not, it's three dollars. Yeah. And right now, for the big grocery deliveries, no matter it's unlimited by weight or whatever, it's still three dollars. And then when we had um, like grocery items, like if I forgot oil and order cabbage and all that, will come on a little motorcycle right up to your door. And then the chooks to go was literally down yeah. to 18 pesos or 27 pesos. I'm like, holy crap, George, it was down to like 50 cents to have the guy, you know. So then we tipped him well. And it's it kind of odd too. Sometimes they deliver it in a truck, but sometimes they deliver it in motorcycles, but not just one motorcycle. The last time they had two motorcycles. It was yeah. Jay and Arnell. They, they stopped and dropped the, the food. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, don't be surprised when I repeat the same names. Because <laughs> we have the same people. people. Well, not only that, people here have similar names. Like Jay. I know a lot of Jays. I know a lot of Arnells. I know a lot of Ariels. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so don't be surprised when I say the same names. It's not. Yeah, it's kind of weird. People here, like June and June. They have a very similar names. Which one? Yeah, I know. Uh, Life is good. Watching from Walmart. Oh, thank you. Victoria, Filipino Peace family. Okay, this is another important thing. Yes. Filipino Peace family had to wait for an hour for a fire truck. Maybe they were busy. Um, Actually, <laughs> they're kind of not in city proper. They're somewhat on the back end. And they have to go through traffic. That's another thing you have to consider. Um, for instance, here it could be a possibility. I, probably not that as much as some of them fire departments, even here, they're put together at the last minute to go out. Not all of them. There's some that actually sit around, and then some of them are actually just people living in their house, kind of like out in the country in the United States. Yeah. They're volunteer firefighters. Yeah, the fire situation. truck here took five minutes on well, actually, I have to time it. It's probably less. I have it on my GoPro. Yeah, um, we had one of the houses room. down not on this street, way down there, caught on fire. Um, we can hear him say Sunog, Sunog, which is fire, fire. And then, yeah, about five minutes they were there and they killed the fire right away, which is great. Um, I was just checking out Baby Girl. I was sitting there thinking about the fire and checking Cedric Edwards out. tried several times to set up my sim. It wouldn't accept. My, oh my gosh, yes, it wouldn't accept my ID. I called Smart and Globe. Both told me how to have my wife set it up under her name. Yeah, no. The it's, foreigners, I think, have been having more problems. Yeah, because they don't you can't recognize, recognize your ID. Your, your license and everything. Yeah. That's why I was telling people that if you've got your license and you're staying here long term, to flip it on over and go in and take care of the. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a partner, try to. The easiest way, actually, I have them registered under their name. Oh, speaking of which, to interrupt that. Uh, we just found out recently that George has a cinema. I wanted to make sure that he wasn't married in the Philippines. So the cinema arrived. <laughs> because we're getting married the 4th of July. I was just looking up there at the paperwork, by the way. It's Speaking of IDs. Yeah, it's weird. It says, it doesn't say that I'm cleared to get married. It says something like, my name is not in the registry on the marriage registry of the Philippines. That's that's basically what it translates to. Right. And so I was like, I was like, you better not be married when that paper shows up because a lot of times they can't verify when you're in the United States and you get married and everything. Because we're married in the United States, have been for a few years, but we get here and they don't want to accept the documents we have because we did during the pandemic. The gold seal on there is not exactly what they want. We even had an attorney do a bunch of stuff, and in the end. Even though we're registered with the Philippine government for the marriage, that registration of marriage is not good enough to complete um, my current immigration. So I'm just continuing to renew my um, regular visa here. And I'm like, well, the best way around it, we're not going to track back to the United States and pay all that money or spend several hundred dollars. We could do a little vacay, a local vacay, and get married and have a Philippine uh, wedding and marriage here, which we plan to do on the 4th of July. So in July, we have, we're going to get married um, here in the Philippines. I got to marry George again. George is thinking about running away. Curse us, foiled again. That's why you're going to keep hearing me talk to the guys like, I'm thinking about getting married in July. I'm, I'm looking for a new dude. Yeah. Well, you could marry the courier. Nice guy. His name is Julius. Hi, Julius. 
Is he single? I didn't ask. Well, next time I'm asking. He's very nice, though. George says, I'm going to take one for the team and let Heidi marry somebody else. There you go. That's right. You don't have to marry me here. That leaves you a free bird. But we're going to get married, plus our birthdays are coming up in July. Um, and then at the end of the year, we were thinking about a meet and greet in July, but we're deciding we're going to do it the first year and the end of the year right now until our channel gets a little bigger and a bunch more people are coming in because the country, you know, is becoming more populated with visitors. And so we're getting married. That's kind of blowing my mind. So he got his clearance for that. And then Tuesday, we or Tuesday or Thursday, <laughs> you ain't running nowhere. We have to go in and get the marriage license. So we'll let you know how that's coming along. Yeah, you don't get no chance to run. <laughs> Did you tell your mother you're getting married again? Really? Hey, if that's a donut guy, I'm in. No, that's... And I'm going to cheat like, oh, get that's out. That's Noel, the whole guy. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. It's the bed guy. Hey. Oh, my gosh. It's, yeah, it's the bed guy. He's hey, like walking down the street selling gonna... a bed on his back, literally. There's really, got, there's really mattress backs here, and it has nothing to do with walking street itself. Hey, babe, I'm going to double cheat on you if the donut man comes. Ariel? Yes. I'm going to see if he's single and free, and then I'm going to get some donuts. Oh, he's single because his wife left him, no, and he's got he could still three be kids. Married. Yeah, but he's probably still legally married. That's another problem. That's what a cinema kind of helps you with, but this document definitely can be forged, so I don't know if I trust that if, if somebody had one. I don't even trust George right now. So when I have marriage license in it, oh, what's wrong, baby girl? I thought you were bringing baby girl out. Oh. Oh. Teether Chess says, Geechee, wear a mask riding a trike. Most do because of the smog. It, it's cheaper, but understand that a trike ride can be close to what a grab is, depending on, and they only go certain places. They have their limitations, too. Yeah, the trike thing is very tricky, again, because hopefully you get a hold of a, an honest trike driver, because, again, they usually bump up the price on you, just so you know. Um, they bump the price on me, and I know whether they bump it up or not. Yeah. LG, if retired in Angel, it's best to get an e-bike or motorcycle or scooter. Too stressful to deal with trikes and jeepneys, less interaction with trikes, less potential problems. Again, most of the problems is the trikes. The jeepney drivers, not so much. No, not, not even, not at all. I kind of call it 50-50 on that because getting a motorcycle is super dangerous. Your brother has seen a lot of tragedies with oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, motorcycles no, no. and being in that traffic. Well, when you guys get here, you get a better idea if, because we know people riding. If you ride a scooter, ride responsibly, and you'll see what I mean when you get here. These oh people God. drive everywhere. On the side, in between. Yeah. And, and the cars, I'd say a lot of them just don't care they don't so. care um like for instance our e-track it's it's huge right i mean me and heidi ride in it and these jeepneys <laughs> like almost sideswipe you yeah so it's just you have to just be responsible it depends on your income and what you want to deal with personally like i said to simplify it a grab because do you really want to invest a couple thousand us into a motorcycle or e-bike or e-trike and all that you know, honestly, that could probably take you through for a couple of years of riding around on, you know, yeah. transport and you could figure it out. I wouldn't do, which will bring me around to real quick. I will bring in, um, go ahead and grab, you might want to grab her and check her because she's, um, we'll bring you around to, um, that buying, we already talked about buying the big ticket items here in the Philippines. You may want to hold off on, it could be a financial like ruin for you, but uh, loaning money to family members and other expats becomes very common and also leaves people in debt. So um, people have encountered people at malls, restaurants, and everything else as expats and other expats will actually ask you to loan them money for businesses. Uh, they'll friend you. A lot of people won't even make friends with other expats. They didn't come here that's why some people's beliefs are like everybody rushing to Dumaguete and there's a hundreds of expats over there and it's an ex large expat community. But you have the other portion of people that have a different mind. They're like, yeah, I didn't come here to be with all these expats and other foreigners. I came here to live in the Philippines to be with Filipino people and to do my own thing. And they do because they've encountered those people. And I'm not saying it's everybody in whole, just be aware that there will be others expats that could ask you for money 
invest in businesses or scams that go on. Expats are one of the, it's just not Filipinos that do the scams. You're going to find that there are expats scamming people. I mean, like so much so they'll approach guys in the mall and they'll be like, hey, there's a party going on. You want to come with, and then they tell you there's a bunch of women there and you get there and then those women take their money or they have them invest and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper into that, that, uh, what do you call that mouse hole or whatever mouse trap. So investing or giving money to a girlfriend or another expat or family members that need it for other things, you will go broke quick. So, and so needs a surgery and it could be actually true. You know, you see it with your own eyes and then, we have encountered where we do have what I call our godchildren. You know, we're establishing godchildren, but like George said, no offense against them. Once we're in, we're kind of responsible, po possibly. Like, you know, if what if all of a sudden we couldn't say no if they needed kidney surgery, which right now we couldn't afford anyways. But let's say some emergency comes up and she needs she needs medicine and everything. We we would be you know, responsible to help them or we wouldn't want to turn them down. So it's expenses and another like, like pitfall and thing that actually comes up. Yeah. Well, one of the major mistakes usually done, um, this is very common. And again, we're not picking on one particular expert because we were contacted by several experts with a very similar situation. One, they would normally it's a guy meeting a girl here. And then the girl would basically hey, say, hey, um, I got a plot of land that we can buy. So they'll buy the land and they have the title to the land and then they'll build a house. Okay. So they build a house. But here's the problem with that story. <laughs> Be aware and check it out to see if that plot of land is actually legitimate. A lot of times expats buy these plot of land. And their squatter land, which means you're really not really supposed to be there. Um, be aware that squatting here is not legal by any means. It's not like America. If you squat here, squat in America for X amount of time, you get to stay there. No, here that it doesn't work that way. So here's what usually happens. And this is a very typical story, unfortunately. Um, guy meets girl, girl bu buys land from the expats money build a house using the expats money they live there and then the expats find out that they're squatting and to make it worse again for some strange reason the story is always the same that's that same expat builds like a little business for this girl on the squatter land and then um usually they work the expat works online and this is very typical, just so you guys know, okay? Bottom line, don't fall for that. If your girl does have a plot of land that they're selling or buying, try to purchase it when you've arrived here. What? No, it's a very typical story. It yeah. happens everywhere in the Philippines. Yeah. And that's one of the ma major mistakes, again. Um, so, but luckily, again, it's only one out of ten that has this story yeah that's a baby i'm not talking about anybody in particular this happens everywhere in the philippines very common story remy smith there's also that the travel vlogs that are dated that ride through towns yeah, and some of they're just older videos. Yeah. And they could change on a weekly basis and close shop. There's so many that I see up and down this highway, MacArthur, that are here one moment and gone. We've shown you several of them, like the the I Mango, the mango place was just here a few weeks ago and it's gone. It's gone. So not that that would actually pertain to where you actually live, but that's just one of the examples, pharmacies, all that. Businesses come and, and go, yeah. And they move around the area really quick, too. Another position comes open, they don't hesitate. It's not like the United States where they're, where Walgreens or some of these bigger businesses are planted. No, if there, a, an opportunity comes up and there's buildings available, they do tend to move for that reason, too. All the so I mango sure probably left because they raised the, the rent. 
Yeah, they've been raising. The they rent. raised the rent from ten thousand to thirteen thousand. Which is a big deal in those places. Yeah. And that's why a lot of businesses are in houses. I mean, think about it. Would I open a business right there for 15,000 or rent this house for 15,000 and open a business right here? And a lot do. And a lot do. Mm -hmm. Ruby, good day, Heidi and George. Hi, Ruby. It makes it easier for them to open businesses. If you, if you do it legally and you go through and get all the licensing and everything and you start to do it, it's it's okay, but then that starts to intrude on your personal life, Then these people are leaving them open for 12, 14 hours a day, and it, it, it's been a thought for a lot of people to come here and start businesses, to actually start a business out of their home, being it's available to do, because people walk up and down the neighborhood selling stuff out of their houses, and like I said, it's weird, you know, noodle shops from their houses. Well, and neighbors ask you to, to open a business. I can't tell you how many people have asked me to open a store here. They're all over the place. There'd be no profit. There's, there's two right down the street. He would have the ability, but believe it or not, there was one just next door and they were open for years and years and years, but I can't see the profit. You're more just doing it to help people. I don't want to have to go in and, and out of the heat just to hand off an item. Yeah, and people will ask for, of, for stuff. And then you're going to have people that will just sit there and ask you for the credit. And they tend to do it in the end. Yeah, utang, I, utang, which I means credit. Yeah, no utang. For so long for sure. And it's, it's just not worth it. The most we, most we might make is 100 bucks a month. Well, not to mention it eats up 40. your time because you're manning the store. Oh, that's what I said. It just yeah. kills the... There's a lot of them, actually, to be honest with you. I can't think I of see that. the expats sitting literally in front of the store. Yeah. Neil Martin, I have BPI. The one problem with them is that they charge you 50 pesos or t to deposit or withdrawal from them. It's if it's not the branch you open that. Well, that makes sense. All of them charge to deposit. Certain, they charge a certain fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Fluffy, yes, yes, this yes. this just happened. Pungus and fire department just fired because of drinking party with, while three houses burn and five died. Yes, this just yes, happened. Yes, yeah, we had talked about that in the news where the fire happened. Yeah. Um, this is again, Tito Cha again, this is his experience. Just got back from the Philippines, Legaspi, man, the petrol fumes are rough when you get stuck in traffic. Out there in the e track I told George, you know, I have a sensitive sniffer and when I get out there, it does get nauseating and dizzy among those fumes. That's why you've seen that trike guy in a few videos back. Yeah, Pogi always has a mask. Um, the fumes. The traffic cops always have masks. That's the air quality in the Philippines, unless you're way out in the mountains, even out in the provinces, it can still be an actual issue. But in the cities like no, here, it's that bad. is it's not bad. the best. And so that's where you have to do the checks and balances. Do you get your fresh air all the time? Which we still get fresh air. We open the windows all the time. But what I'm saying is your air quality is still bad in all the bigger cities and midsize and small cities, unless, you, like, unless you're out there in the like out in the sticks where you're actually living air quality can be an issue here for some people. So hmm. maybe I should start wearing a mask. Not because yeah, because of the fumes. That's a good idea, maybe, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking for other shoes. Yeah, she's sitting right here. My my shadow. That's my shadow. Hi Shadow. Cedric Edwards, we're trying to plan a house busing now. Oh already had the tribe house busing. My plan on a mountain indigenous wedding. Oh that's interesting. They had a tribal blessing in their house. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, she probably hit it. She did not. She's over there not playing. She's over there trying to sleep the kitty. Oh, you'd be she surprised so how many people she blocked. <laughs> California Oscar, Heidi, you're right. You have to be able to say no to moochers and people asking for money or vestments. And biggest than... cameras I've ever met with other expats is guys with magic fingers. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I like us just being in this area, now that all the foreigners have come back, there were, you know, a lot of people left the Philippines during the pandemic. A lot of them couldn't get back in. Now they're back in full force. And I, I, you know, it's, 
it is a major concern that a lot of them go broke on the side, spending money in other places. They try to open businesses. They try everything that was in their mind. And then a lot of mess for the money afterwards. And well, you have to watch people friending you. They have to, you know, you want to make sure that they're alter your and, motives. That's, that's the word. So, um, I see, I really can't go into the people that we see that where it's actually happening, but George is right. A lot of the expats have ulterior, ulterior motives. Yeah. You have, sure. you have to watch. And it's not just expats. I mean, some Filipinos are devious as heck. Yeah. Then they ain't even going to lie about that one. You just have to, you know, you just have to watch it's, you know, me and George are like a super team when it comes to things because George sees one thing and I, I definitely see the other. And there's been so many times I'm like, George, wait a minute, look at that behavior or wait a minute, look what they're getting ready to do or look what they just did. And George will think again and we'll put our information together. Like, God, I didn't even think of it that way. So we do a lot of that where we complete each other or realize things are going on. And it's like, you have to. And then sometimes I'm like, dang, I became my grandparents situation, but I think with the new internet world and the way things are running, you have to be, you know, like Encyclopedia Brown detectives or all that. What, what's up with your magic fingers? Uh-uh, no, you don't. You have one chance for that and not anymore. Ah, get out of there, Kachow. Kachow. Speaking of sticky fingers. What? Uh, you, here, babe, you didn't eat your... Oh, because we're on, we're live. Oh, because I said try not to eat too much during the live. Yeah. I was too hungry. I'm munching a sucker down. Have some Jack Daniels Coke. No, you can't have Jack and Coke. This oh, morning. man. You can have that afterwards. Can, can I drive around town on my e trike? No. Mm. Not on Jack and Coke. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neil Martin, that's called an F-bar. Yes, one of the forms. There are two of them. Yeah, I just don't want to get into. Um, we've actually talked about that stuff, and I think during the banking thing, I've got a list of them inside of our banking expat help videos. Um, we got a crap load of expat help videos, and they're pretty straight to the point. And we're talking about doing a few more of them, but I think everything we're going to do will be a lot more lives and out and about lives and trying to give you guys as much as possible and answer your questions and here, but um, it's been played out throughout the internet, everything about coming here um, and through the YouTubing and these same topics have been gone through, a, you know, uh, probably a thousand times, but it's kind of like, you know, you have to apply to you what actually applies, take away with what you need and really get to, you know, understand what your needs are. We can't really, answer what a sweet spot is for you. Now, I know in my mind where I was at, I'd like to make, you know, a little bit more money because I thought our money would go further. That's been our biggest thing is we thought, I thought, I wouldn't say George, but George had not been back to the country for a while. So a lot of things changed after the pandemic hundred percent. And so prices shot up as we entered the country. And so can we still get the things that we want? Yes if we give up on some of our Western items and I'm not about, you know, to give up on, you know, on things. I'm yeah. just trying to think about like, okay, AKA do we really need paper towels? I don't think a lot of Filipinos spend the oh. extra money on the paper towels, what's, toilet what's, paper. What's yeah. What's toilet paper? What's paper towel? Um, don't use the word toilet paper. It's bathroom tissue. Right. So if we add that up and it's a few dollars, $5 a month, $10 a month, whatever we're spending on that. The same with, we get the diaper wipes and we use them to wipe everything up. We wipe the cat's eyes when they're, you know, dirty or we've used them for a million things and we keep, you know, but at the price of the diaper wipes, cause we get the better brands or something because they're thicker. These are things, if we would just give up some of my Western mentality and George has grown into some of those habits, 100% like toothpaste. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> Filipinos use toothpaste just... all the time. Use baking soda. Actually, no. Um, rock salt. Either if, way. If you... Filipinos are out of toothpaste, they use rock salt. Or them little swisher sticks. The little mm. tree bark things that they cut up. They actually sell those sticks. Mm. Um, but no, it, it is. I I just say that you know everybody needs to learn where they're 
sweet spot their is. Their comfort zone. Their comfort zone. Because a, a few more things that, you know, you want to. I know where my comfort zone is. You better get your hands off me before you lose your comfort zone, Twilight Zone. Get off me. <laughs> All love's in jeopardy, baby. What? Ooh. What? What? I lost on Jeopardy, baby. Yeah. Did you hear something? What's that? I said, I lost on Jeopardy. Remember when that song came out and that's what it sounded like? I love on Jeopardy. I lost on Jeopardy. Oh, baby. that's one of those misheard songs. Jeopardy, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was trying to Anyways, figure out. Anyways, yeah. yeah. But um, something else, guys, that kind of comes along with all this and mistakes and pitfalls is medical costs. That is one of the biggest, I would say, besides loaning the money, might be up there in that side-by-side -side thing. Medical costs can absolutely sink your ship. Well, make sure you have the medical you need here. Not everything translates. What I'm saying is there are some medications that aren't here. Uh, one major medical and you don't have the insurance or the backup payment for it, you're in major trouble too because the hospital just ain't going to deal with you. And then people go, oh, well, there's a law where they can't, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, actually, they can. A lot of laws don't apply to certain situations here in the Philippines. That I'm not talking about medication, babe. That's something totally different. I'm talking about some people buy the insurance overseas that don't pertain to half the hospitals here. They get here. They arrive and 80%, 90% of the insurance is you have to prepay. You're not going to get away with, they're going to just cover. Now, if you guys get, um, I think it's Pacific Cross was the one that's through um, our friend. So check out Michael Onstad. Um, he's on Facebook. Hey, Michael. You have where, you look, if you go to the specific hospitals, it does just outright pay. Uh, Medicare is not accepted here. A lot of things. I know that the TRICARE for the military people that are paying for it and others actually cover, but I think you have to pay up front for TRICARE too. So a lot of these you have to pay up front for, and a lot of people don't even have the finances for that. And some hospital stays may only cost you a hundred us dollars could cost you 50. But if you get into major medical surgeries or long-term stay and watch, they may try to just have you stay there. So in other words, you'll go in for one thing. That's that's another reason I didn't want to go in for the nosebleed because I figured they'd have kept me for probably stay at least overnight or longer to yeah. try to figure but, yeah, out right, what, minimum, and, minimum. And with me, okay, with me in the United States, they'd have kept me there for a few days in the hospital trying to figure out, you know. And all she really needed was one prescription drug. That's it. Well, to stop the bleeding. Yeah, now, what the, the cause? Bleeding, yeah. You know, through lupus, it was dealing with my cells and a bunch of other things. And so they would have done testing and did this, this, and that, and just kept me there. I didn't want to pay that bill either. But you would want an insurance that covers you and pays at that hospital. You have to be living somewhere around that hospital. If you're self-paying, you want to have X amount. Give or take, if you guys go to a decent hospital and need, like, let's say, a heart surgery, you're looking at 30, 40,000, not 400,000, maybe, like the United States. I'm probably off on somebody's cost, so don't quote me word for word, but we know that at St. Luke's, um, a single valve heart replacement, whatever that is, is about 20, 30,000 US for that surgery. They're without insurance, they're gonna want that up front. And they're not going to wait after and hand your bill. And if they do do a bill in the end, you have to settle up no matter what the law is. You either have to bring an attorney in and do some sort of contract, you gotta take out a loan, family members have to make promises for the money. This is a major downfall and this is, you know, eventually expats end up going back to their home country because of medical. It sent our friend Daryl back. He not only ran out of his disability insurance with medical problems, but his medical problems got the best of him in the end, and he ended up going back to the UK. He's taking care of things. I know things are up and down. Um, there's been lots of examples where people have gotten sick and then they had to leave. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you no, just no. want to take care of it. I mean, medical, and that is one of my major concerns. But when I left the U.S., I knew for, for me, it's something, you know, I think I got reliant on doctors all the time. 
Oh, you mean like the, medication? How they just write you a script each time you see them, kind of deal? Well, that and you know, I'll see you in a month. Yeah. Come back in two weeks for blood work. See you in another two weeks for blood work. Same blood work. And uh, we all know how the doctor system works in the United States, too. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to do a case on case basis. Now, right now, um, a visit costs $10, $20, $20 for blood work. We pay for that individually. But right now, if I come into any major medical, we no longer have major savings right now. So for me, I'd have to make a trip back to, as I said, the U.S. And recently I made the comment that I won't even do it for that. So really, you just that could be a pitfall in your retirement plan would be medical. And that does stop people from coming in. So uh, get the interest. But the problem with that right now is, honestly, I cannot afford that kind of money. Um, with my medical, I think it is, it's up there. It could be several hundred US dollars a month to be covered. But um, we have to get back to Michael Onset and get a better ideal. But I do not have it here in the Philippines. And I can't use my insurance from the US here. So at least I still have that in the U.S. And, you know, so I've been transparent about that. That's like backup, backup. Mm -hmm. Ruby, always use legal services when purchasing land or property in the Philippines. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you can't. Again. Um, and guys, don't be fooled. You're not going to own that house mm -hmm. and land. And if it belongs to your wife and then she passes away, it goes to her kids. That's the most simplest way to put it. People come through and later say, oh, well, that's not true. I'll get my attorney to say it's mine. Bottom line, attorneys and all, you you won't be, you can live there to the day you pass away and you're setting up your wife, which there's nothing wrong with that. But in the middle of divorces and whatever can be done or splits or whatever, all of that years of getting that settled, you know, you might pass away before that even actually happens. So um, we tell people, if you really want a good grasp on it, you rent or lease the land for 30 or 40 years, 50 years. I think they're up to 50 years right now. I think they're 25 years at a time allowed. And you just do that and then build. And then let, you know, if you pass away, then it's paid up for your wife and kids and all that. But you have the right to be on that land at that point. So it's, um, there's a lot of things you can do. But yeah. Definitely, definitely get some attorneys involved and, have the land surveyed like we were speaking to Bill recently and get all of your ducks in a row because, you know, you just have to do. Yeah, do your due diligence. Again, some people approach you with um, the land title and try to sell you the land. Seriously, this happens. I That happened to me twice already. Well, here. And, yeah, here. You know, here in Angel City and places, you know, they get into the buy here, pay here and the rent. And yes, you can. And the condos and. Just, just make sure you check everything out. Yeah. But like I said, for every one issue or two issues we talk about, there are eight great ones that happen. These are pitfalls. We're, we're letting you know things that you know we've experienced or things we've seen or people talk about or people that have contacted us and just you know things to check out. Check it out. Off the beaten path, our Philippine adventures. Hey guys, just getting to the show. We'll listen from the beginning. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, LG, I honestly don't know. What's the latest on Margaritaville and Fields? I heard unconfirmed reports they found a place near the petrol station. I mean, I don't know anything yeah, about we don't know. that one. We, we don't have station. nothing. He's we, talking about. We know that they left over there only from the news and reading, but we, we, I mean, we've only been down there a few times, and if we do, we breeze through. We're, it's just not a, we have, um, I don't know. I don't even think you have interest in being over there. Not really. It's like I said, it's two streets and two areas. We like to, like I said, Candy Palace is the biggest place we like to go through. I know they got some nail salons down there and we've been down there. We love Kokomo's. We like Kokomo's the awesome. There. That's worth the trip. And it's worth the trip just to sit down there on the occasion. On perch. But I hate to say it, to be down there every day and have breakfast and be down there in that atmosphere all the time. Unless you guys are bar people and there's nothing wrong with the women and men there. There's nothing wrong yeah. with the expats down there. A lot of friendly people. I just can't. I'm trying to give an idea what it would be like. It'd be like hanging out on the Miami Strip constantly or something. It's more like um, just, it, I'm, we're not teenagers in like, a um, situation. It's kind of like. It's like Cone, Cone, Disney, Coney Island, Island without the Ferris Disney. wheel if where people keep there, approaching you, so selling you stuff. 
Yeah, it's really bad. I don't like the barkers that are down there because as soon as you get down there, that's where all the street kids are. That's where all the barkers that are selling things. You know what I've seen on some of those islands, like um, where the Airbnbs and over there in Sigihor and all those other islands where I talk about looking for our second honeymoon situation. They actually listed in the Airbnb, no barkers will approach you in this area because a lot of people get bombarded by yeah. the people selling things and they want you to go on the tours <laughs> and those, it does get those, old. It was like lobsters they were selling. Oh my God, they were selling lobsters on Walking Street. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's not even in ice. How long has he had them and all that? Yeah. And, and it was, he was wanting 40 or $50 a pound. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying for what's possibly half rotten. And even if I did and they were on ice and looked super beautiful. We were in a hotel, dude. And it was like. Yeah. It's kind of odd. It was odd, except for unless they... Now, here's a good chance you could go take it to one of those vendors that are cooking their barbecue and ask them to throw I think, it on the I grill. think that was the idea. But I'm I think that was the stand idea. There for, you could be waiting in line for an hour just to do that. And yeah. It's like, I don't know. that. I kind of pass on that situation. Yeah, if you want... So, you if you're on Viagra or Cialis, you know... Everything is Viagra, sold down Cialis. there, but they, but that's where all the kids are asking for money. And like I said, there's, I, I'm not downing the, the, the women that have to make their money, the guys that own the bars, the foreigners and the Filipinos that own the bars, the Koreans and all that. You know, it is being taken over by, by the Koreans that are actually buying, which again, no problem with that. I'm saying foreigners. So I just can't see sitting down there eating breakfast every day or sitting down there and vlogging every day and. I don't know. It's just uh so what happened to Margaritaville? Honestly, do you want my real on I don't really use this where I say I don't give a rat's ass? Well now see your shirt. I don't give a damn. It's, there it is. Uh, I don't know. And there's a lot more beautiful places in Pampanga to go. There's tons of places you beautiful places you can go and have drinks and hang out and there's a lot of other places, so um, we kind of don't get all up into what opens, what closes. The only reason we mention some of those stories down there is because it comes up in the major news, and it's kind of our spiel in the beginning to say, hey, it's hot today, and, you know, George was eating his Cheerios with, with oh, I said monkey milk, caravel milk, and George likes to milk monkeys for his milk. No? That's creepy. You know, you can milk a monkey, right? You know, the people that throw them pieces of bread and the fruit out, they milk those monkeys afterwards. <sighs> so we don't talk about all that, guys. Just oh, my guys. gosh. No? Guys, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification. Oh, my gosh. Hell, and look for the crazy videos that are released and check out all of our social media, guys. This isn't the only social media account we have. Go to those other accounts and sign up, guys. We do have Instagram, Yeah, TikTok. go to our TikTok while it exists. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of crazy stuff on yeah, that one. We have one. somewhat, uh, allegedly, 21K followers. Hey, babe, tell them what we've been seeing recently. What are them little kid kid things that you said that we were making? We were watching the scary movie yesterday, and I thought I seen a little teeny oh, baby. Chanux. They're Chanux. What's a Chanux? Oh my gosh. Do you even have a photo of the dude? Okay, so you guys ever watch, um, read Dante's Inferno, which is, again, written in the year 1300. But Chanux are essentially babies that died before they were baptized. I'm giving you the background on it. Okay, so these are little demon children. And the reason what brought this up is we watch our, our CCTV because, again, when... Right now, like right now, the dog was barking. All the windows and... are closed because you know keep the AC. So our window is essentially the CCTV. So we, you know, whenever the dog barks, we look right. Yeah. So on the CCTV, we see this little child alone running in the middle of the street, like literally. Now here's the thing, too. There was no parent in front of the child nor behind the child for the entirety of the video, which means the child was running alone. Mm -hmm. What brought this up is because at night, like around 1030 or 11 at night, actually, I think it was more like 1130. Actually, there's this little child in the middle of the road running by him or herself, 
No parent in front. Must be under two. Yeah, no no parent in front Which and no parent in the back. Be normal. They're nearby somewhere, but yeah. we didn't see them. Well, I didn't see them on the, the camera at all, running. at all. So I said to Heidi, we do have Chanaks here. Now Chanak is a mythical creature. Again, allegedly it's a unbaptized child and that died. And they go out in the middle of the night and lure. It's almost like a little cute chup chupacabra. Yeah, it looks like a child. It's a baby, basically. It's like, so it cries, so it'll lure you in. So it said here in the Philippines, whenever that happens in your middle of the night and there's a child in the middle of the road and it's crying, do not approach it. That's the saying because odds are it's a child, which means if you approach it, once you cuddle it, it'll turn into a monster and eat you. That's what a Chanak is. You wish. Yeah. You wish, Ben. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of Filipino superstition, but it, it's it's you odd again. It watching the CCTV, we see little tiny children running alone by themselves. And I've just been watching. Yeah, we see it. You know, our little friend King. What is he under? He's under five. Yeah. But his parents let him run all over the neighborhood, and I said, "Yeah, but that's how safe it is." So kids everywhere playing, but. I we I said you did see that little kid, little baby running by. Why? Right? Yeah, I was like, I see him all the time. Yeah. Like, Holy crap! Um, why do expats think they can bring their great business ideas here, like the expensive hot dog car in Angeles? Didn't last long. No, most it happens a lot. Most Western ideas will not work in a third world country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, like an expensive hot dog cart. And to get that hot dog cart going, you have to go through all of this. You're supposed to a lot and, of them and more honestly. and more. This is just uh this is just for online and online sales and online business. Right. But if so but if it's the wanted, food if he wants to sell out here, he would have to go and adjust that yeah, I and think, go back in. Yeah, you think I think you need I think you three more tax cer certifications and... if you're gonna pay buy sell hot dogs legally. Legally, I'm not believing those carts are actually from the foreigners are actually going through all of that or they would they have to have that all taped on the front of it to let yes. you know they're doing all their, you know, bits, but it happens a lot. I, I know there's a lot of uh, expats down there in that area that are opening businesses with other foreigners because that's about the only way they're allowed to do it because Anybody doing that type of business has to invest hundreds of thousands of U.S. money. There are rules to opening up those bars and and. I w don't recommend opening up a bar. Period. No, Not in the yeah, Philippines. No. no. There's a lot. It's going It's deeper on. than you think. It is, and you know what kind of profits can really be coming from it. Really, you're just supporting some jobs and a bunch of other things. And and, and like I said, I don't want you guys to think that. You know, we don't go down because, oh, you guys have been down there. We've seen you. Yeah, we've been down there. But it's it was a base. Like, we went down there at our birthday time because we went to Candy Palace and Kokomo's. And we had, you know, a dinner down there and lunch. And we love Kokomo's. It's a great place. Oh, we love Kokomo's. And then the oh, man, we should, we should probably go there again. Yeah, they have really good food. So that, actually, I can dance for you on the dancing pole. No, I'm not staying the night. I said I'm gonna drop in for some food. Oh, and see our boy. I can say I can stay in the night. I can like a uh, survey. Hey, maybe you can spend your your second honeymoon there. I can take one for the team. No, so maybe you can go get a hot dog, a real one. California Oscar, you know, you know Heidi. When I was over there, the guys used charcoal toothpaste. Yeah, they have charcoal toothpaste. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys used charcoal charcoal toothpaste? It's okay. It's overrated, I think. Um, for those of you who don't follow, um, charcoal toothpaste is supposed to whiten your teeth better than the baking soda-based toothpaste. Um, Tito Cha, Heidi and George, I know it's easier said than done, but I'm living my life in the Philippines and will die in the Philippines, not running back to America and leave my asawa. So he's not going to go back to America. He's not going to leave his wife. Good choice, Tito. Good choice. We're not. I mean, we're going to handle what we have to handle here. And my original plan was to go back to the U.S. I mean, I told George that I'm going to stick it out. You know, I'm like this. I'm going to handle it. And the first time I get a leg cramp, I'm like, oh, my God, let's go to the hospital. Oh, my God. You know, I'm like, I'm going to stick it out. And that's where right. I'm like, oh. George, George could have a broken leg 
and and a heart attack and a stroke, and George is still going to keep moving. Filipinas are like that. They take an aspirin, all, take a ticket, and they keep moving. All I need is an aspirin and a cup of coffee. Pretty much. No, so seriously, that's what they do. It's So they, they tough out, and think about the wild, wild west. And I know we ain't there, guys, but what I'm saying is, People handled their own business back in the day. They really did. And I had to think like that because things were getting so bad in the U.S. And we don't mean like us personally. We've heard haters say, oh, it's because you guys were doing bad that you ran off. You're going to hear people say only people that can't hack it as a man or can't hack it as a woman or, or take care of their family or this. They run off to the Philippines. That's not true. The Philippines has a lot of great opportunities. My husband's from the Philippines. A lot of people are married to Filipinos. Nobody's talking about you. I'm referring to that milking monkey. And which, by the way, your milk is on the wall. Be sure to clean it up later. <laughs> and <laughs> look at George Oprah. <laughs> so what's that? You oh. know, it's it's a lot like that jelly that jelly arm. But, you you but, see how long it sticks on the ceiling. Oh, the little and, and some of them have the string on it where yeah, it smacks no. up on the wall. Oh my god, George. So People come here for good reasons and medical becomes the furthest thing from their, their mind. And in my mind, when I left, we had a fair amount of savings. Uh, George sold a business. We sold cars. We had it. But we things sold happened. Cars. Boy, we did we sell cars. We had to send money back to the U.S. <laughs> a long time ago. That was an experience. Motorcycle, four vehicles. Oh, my gosh. I missed my motorcycle. So we, we did this, but circumstances has hit us in the last two and a half years since we've left and that broke us down and things got really rough guys it we weren't into the point where we were just going to be homeless no just things got tight and but we we're able to pay our expenses and and things have been fine medical is something though we wish more people if they have the opportunity more than we did i would set money aside for emergencies um really at a certain age it's not an option to fly back to the u.s it's not within reason is it george no. so that was going to be my plan i come up with about five or six contingency plans and right now they're all slipping away so right now i am on a pay to pay and hoping with an increase of us working that we're going to build this up we are still young hopefully god willing and whatever willing, you know, to the AI gods or whatever's going on, guys, that <laughs> I'll just ask the AI god to take care of me there. But oh, we'll save oh. here. See okay. if you can remember, show her how big remember she is. Skynet? You know what the the um what they're gonna call it here? No, really, the the new AI Skyboard. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not making that up. It's a little hard to. Yeah, she yeah, she likes to go to. down. You guys see her. We can't see her that way. Like in the last few days, she's growing big by the moment. Here, I'm gonna hold her up so you can't. It's kind of, she just looks fat right now, but we can feel uh -huh. I've got her supported under her armpits, guys. She's not as it's weird to say she's not as big as she looks. She's still a small kitten. That's our worry. But her breed of cat is like Bella. She is yeah, meant to be short. Yeah. Well, she's got the short legs and the short body, so she looks a lot smaller. She's officially about six months old, so she is still young, but we know she'll have these kids by the end of the day, maybe. But she's like, she usually doesn't let me love on her, so we know if something's wrong, and she doesn't run from Google Bear. But anyways, guys, in, in saying that, you definitely need to make all these plans, you know, and look out for these pitfalls, guys. And, and on a side note, I want to let you guys know that you know, as always, you guys can message us and email us, and we do get those. And always send, you know, your questions, you know, that we'll you know, answer within reason, guys. So it's uh Hi, Michael. As any. Hey, Good morning, Michael. Georgia and Heidi. Hi. Morning. Hey. hey, Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Mike, Check out Mike, our Philippine journey. He's got his own channel. Yeah. He lives hey, in Mike. Candy Palace. Um, the bottom line is do your research. Simply too many people moving here. That are silly broke. True story. And and, and um, definitely with him, he would actually know he's down there. We see it all the time. 
And we're not talking about like our type of broke. There's different levels of broke. Like we can't go on vacation broke. That's a whole different level situation. We, you know, we take care of a lot of cats. We got all these vet bills. We have all these things that we hand on the side. And, you know, I would say right now we don't want for nothing except for to have more for medical, maybe travel on the occasion and like simple things. And so, um, but these guys come here and yeah, they had certain expectations and they blew through their money really quick. They blew through that money. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Kiki, I was quoted $900 a month by AXA Philippines. That's their max health plan insured for critical illness up cover up to 150,000. That's very expensive. I have insurance here in Ireland. I, I and I pay $200. Some of them are high. Um, it depends on, we've checked into a few of them. Um, yeah, that's, that's the rough part. The medic will become one of your major components that could really crash your entire retirement. I'm hoping like the rest of them eventually that the Medicare and all that will move over here. So we'll at least have the basics. Um, but then again, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we'll ever actually see that. Oh, gee, big families in the Philippines. A kid isn't as precious as a one, two child household. Dime a, do dime a dozen. If I had 10 kids and a couple go bad, no big deal. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Remy Smith, as always, thank you for giving your time to bring us all this help and good, honest info and everyone thank in there. Thank you so much, Remy. Thank you. And thank you everyone for sharing your experiences mm -hmm. with us and with the whole family. Thank you so much. Um, Mike says, according to the Phil PSA, upper middle class annual income in the Philippines is 109K monthly. Mm -hmm. That's about right. Because average um, two earners is on average is 50,000, the upper middle class. So you have the male and female making 50,000, 50,000. So they make around a hundred thousand. That's about right. Um, that wouldn't be average here. No, he says upper middle class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's specific. He says mm -hmm. upper middle class. We're not talking about the average. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have seen crazy X plot. Yes. This is the point of this vlog right now. We have seen crazy X plots blow through 200 K us dollars in two years. A lot of you, and we've heard a lot of big vloggers and we love these vloggers. Um, old dog Geo, a bunch of these others say, you get in here, you get into this mode, you're trying to impress women, you're impressing friends, other expats. I'm telling you, guys will not be out done by other guys by any means. So it's, they come here and they get into this means of helping people and they go into this serious vacation mode. And they see how cheap everything is. And the next thing you know, these bills, and you're not going to not pay a bill when you go somewhere. So you start spending more and more and more and more. And it's just, it just gets to be ridiculous. So it is, it does become a major issue. Can you a, get up here? Yeah. But I think yeah. some, I mean, a lot of expats go homeless because of bad decisions. Yeah. And we can see some of them again, like the, I know it, it hurts to see an expat go downhill, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, we're just Back trying plan. we're trying to prevent that again by telling you again what what not to do. And a lot of them and a lot of guys and you guys may not even have like I have George and then George has family that's been established here forever. Mm -hmm. And it's a big difference. Andy's got friends and we have and, friends yeah. and it's some people have zero plan and only have one or two aspects. And those other expat guys that are around you, you consider friends and you're all Facebook friends and you're friends in different surroundings. And let's see if they're there in the end. Right. You know, there's not a lot of true friends and you have to learn. I wouldn't rely, you know, you have to build your own group. Right. And um, we're lucky that my fam we I have a positive family. What I mean is um, you will encounter again, like for instance, your Filipino or Filipina partner has their family siphoning off of you. Mm -hmm. um, right. My family is actually, they give to me. Mm -hmm. I actually feel bad that, yeah, great. that I'm he not the one family. giving out stuff. They're actually backwards. They're actually like give to me a lot. And I'm so grateful yeah. 
Yeah. Like they are. would get me coffee great from thing. Batangas. They would get us dinner occasionally. Like mm -hmm. we would have this great fe feast. You know what I'm saying? We're blessed that my family is the one that are giving to me versus, mm -hmm. again, some of you will have families that ask for you for money. You have to experience it for yourself. Yeah. A lot of people see all women is bad or see all the guys is bad or that all the Filipino families are going to, you know, leech off of you and that all this is going to go bad or the topics we talk about. But it is a small percentage of all yeah. the subjects we cover. You have to experience it for yourself. Yeah. And actually, um, for, for instance, again, Michael Velasquez is a good friend of mine again. Mm -hmm. Um Another one, another one of my family that actually gave to me. And again, I feel bad. I wish I wish I could give more than what they gave us. Uh, yes. And again, thank you so much, Michael. Um, yes, I'm to cook. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, guys. We we truly appreciate you. You are our family. We are at the third hour, guys. Yeah. Um, we will be, let's see, what is today? Sunday. We are live tomorrow. Yeah, this is Saturday Night Live. So, God, there is so much we'll talk about and review this video and see about coming up with the next subject. We have a bunch of them. I am starved, although I've been sitting here nibbling and stuff. And it was like 12 hours before we ate. So, guys, as always, we appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you when so much. When you leave the live, do a thumbs up for us. It helps spread the video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to reach that goal of 6,000 subscribers by the um end of the month we're working on that goal yeah and again and guys, we're proud of our subscribers you guys are real you, you guys, guys are always there with us yes. yes yeah it's about the quality of our viewers and you guys have been super great um so we will um end this by saying our goodbyes to everybody huskadoosh mr fluffy <laughs> Thank you, Philip, our Philippine journey. Um, Remy, LG's Kiki was here. Um, Sweet Tito, thank you. California Oscar, you mentioned LG. Cedric, you may see some others if you want to call yeah. them out. Michael, Ruby, Tito Cha, Remy Smith, Geechee Lion, Victoria, life is good. Sarah, Sarah Tyson, hi, Sarah. Ted, thank you so much, Ted. As Ted always. Scott, thank Clara you. M. Glenn B. Yep. Okay. Daniel Nets, Dorothy Durning, Comanche Warrior, Tammy J. Hi, Tammy. Daniel was in the house, Comanche Warrior. Carrie Lalonde. Let's leave this place. Cody Racer Williams. X, Clara. Oh, Kiki, of course. Kiki. Papa yeah. in the house. Yes. Yes. Alan Buechner, the people that came in from Facebook, thank you guys. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Do your thumbs up on this too, guys. Send us messages, questions on the side that you guys don't want to ask. And we do thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. you want me to fix you some breakfast? Oh! Oh, she's Yeah. Oh. Some breakfast? Alan Buechner says, oh, my God, the fleas are horrible in this country. <laughs> They are, guys. Yeah. Uh, right now, we do a flea pill. You can get them at the vet's office, Alan. True story. True They're story. Bad. The fleas are bad. Um, a lot of those bugs and mites that I've never seen them so worse. As Ivermectin. Well, make sure there's different types of flea pills. I really would like to refer people to get their medicines direct from the vet, not Five for no. Right, but let the vet give it out if they've got it, because a lot of it online could be fake, even where it looks yes, like a legit account. Yes, yes, some Unless of them are fake. It direct from Bear, or it's better for you to go into the vet. They can do actual flea dips and different things. Don't try to use direct oils on them or anything. A lot of those are no good, guys. So we thank you guys, and we love Take you. Take care. Take care, guys. Get a nap. <laughs> that will be busy. Yeah. There oh she is. God. Yeah, cat will be busy right there. Oh my gosh, what's she doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> you crazy? She's going behind the. Yeah, she's she, she's trying to nest. She, I think she is. She's but, trying to nest. Oh, honey bear. See you guys later. We love you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, guys. Until tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, honey, you can go to dad and